Today I'll be drawing the Mycena hay. Uh, let me just get the thing in. Sorry, I'm calling the Mycena in my head. Mycena haematopus. Yes. Um, and before I start, I want to just send a little text on Instagram, and I want to check the sound. So just give me a moment. For today, I actually have some music I'm listening to on my own, and I'm just worried that uh, the music might be picked up in the recording. Okay, sounds like it's not. Oh, okay, that's great. Everything's fine. Let me just change to drawing. I was kind of thinking like perhaps I won't post on to um feels my little five because this is art and um, aside from charming I'm not sure a lot of people see me draw. So that's why I'm posting it tonight. Art is cool. Post it on just in case anyone can have art. Wikipedia. Uh, so this is the Mycena haematopus. So the Mycena haematopus is commonly known as the breeding fairy helmet, the Burgundrop bonnet, or the breeding Mycena, is a species of fungi in the family Mycena se I think that's it, of the order of of the order Ag Agaricales. Agaricales. 
It is widespread and common in Europe and North America and has also been collected in Japan and Venezuela. It is saprotrophic, 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 meaning that it obtains nutrients by consuming decomposing organic matter. And the fruit bodies appear in small groups or clusters on the decaying logs, trunks, and stumps of deciduous trees, particularly beech. The fungus, first described scientifically in 1799, is classified in the section Lactipidus of the genus Mycena, <laughs> along with other species that produce a milky or colored latex. So the fruit bodies of the Mycena have caps that are up to four centimeters, four centimeters. So that's like about the size of my index finger, something like my, my first finger. Um, I mean the height. Um, they are characterized by their reddish color, the scalloped capped edges, and the dark red latex they bleed when cut or broken. Both the fruit bodies and the mycelia are weakly bioluminescent. The mycena produces various alkaloid pigments unique to the species. The edibility of the fruit bodies is not known definitely. <laughs> they don't particularly look like mushrooms you would pick up and eat. So it's a, um, I can imagine why um, no one's tried to eat it because they don't really look like you should eat it. But they are very pretty. When I saw them the first time, I was like, oh, this is so gorgeous. So let me start drawing. So I'm going to be using art set. If Johnny is watching the video, I have not yet bought the pro version. I haven't had the time to go to YouTube and watch videos of so far. I think today I will try my best to stream looking into those things. But so far, I'm really enjoying it. Um, refresh. Something interesting. I am using. your weekend? I hope you had a really great time. Okay, so this is what the mushrooms look like. This is the first of the 11 mushrooms that I've selected to work on. And yeah, okay, let me get stuck. So, for this one, I don't need Oh, right. Okay, let me just pull up the space on it. I kind of like the effect of like being the tallest mushroom 
and then make a small list. Oh, and let me um, pull up my reference list. Now, so my, my, my computer is just covered in mushrooms now. <laughs> The the chat is going to be down here, so if I look down here and I reply, I apologize. And not, it, I, I will try my best to remember to look up, but yeah, chat's not down here, so yeah, I'll try to keep an eye out. I'm really good. So, what type of uh, things have you been drawing? I noticed you've been trading quite a lot. Original characters. Uh, are you working on a story at the moment? In an odd way, these mushrooms kind of remind me of the tips of creative businesses. That means how much of me says I've been working on you making some old Right, so they really are hosting me. Just just for anyone who watches the stream. Oh, you know, um, something that I've decided to do, I've actually decided to set up a Discord because I was really um, thinking that sense to have a Discord because maybe if you wanted to share your artwork, um, like your progress in your library, you can share it directly there. Or like after my streams, um, oftentimes I find like it's a bit difficult to immediately want to post my work online. Like I don't think I've posted much more work online yet. Um, but like, because if you've watched the stream, you probably want to see the end product. Because the quality here is also great because of my work. <laughs> so um, basically, I'm trying to set up a Discord. So when that's set up, I'll have like a category where you can, uh, I'll post up my finished works and you can actually see it first. So anyway, for all those who have not seen Charlie's amazing artworks, I just want to take a second <laughs> to go to your, um, your Instagram. Uh, for anyone in the future who wants to see because I'm gonna like post this up on my YouTube channel I think so um, yeah I, I'm creating these art streams like also thinking of the future like um, so I definitely want people to see how amazing that is me I really like characters with red hair by the way so I, I remember like thinking Ava is so cute um, Ah, I like these characters as well. Like um, this character has red eyes and such a cute little mini. I like it a lot. I love the hair. I'm so into like cloud colors and so the hair is fluffy and cute and it's like a cloud. I love it. And this is a character. So I'm wondering is the tail this character's or is it this character's? And the hands and the legs kind of remind me of obsidian. Can you play Minecraft? You know, there's the obsidian rock, the, the, I think it's cracked obsidian, which is really, really cool. So, I think, I think um, this, these two and Ava are my favorite so far. Have you worked on any of these ones? Um, okay, Charlene says, oh, nice, this goes so well. Nice. Yes, okay, I'm going to continue with that. The tail reminds me of a short character. Ah, which would obviously, I know, it would make sense because um, the hair color and the tail color is the same. But I just wanted to check because I could be wrong. So, <laughs> just wanted to check. Their name is Jack. Oh, cute. Does Jackal have like any special abilities? Jackal is the <laughs> Too much pressure on the screen. 
and I have them to remind myself to check if I can see because I move around so much. Is Jackal's original form like a gem? Or is Jackal's original form something else? Like a, like a tiny cloud, a tiny cube, a cat cloud? <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking of it right now. <gasps> this is so cute. It's a original form of a little cute cat cloud. Jackal's original form looks like a ball. Whoa, what a small legs! Look how it looks like. That is so cute! That is so cute! Have you drawn it? If I, if you've drawn it and I haven't seen it, I'm gonna like go through your Instagram again. That is so adorable. A ball of wool with small legs. I didn't look like that stuff. <sighs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Please, please draw it if you have not yet drawn it. I would love to see it in this like, original form. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just saying it. Sorry. Um, them in their original form. Uh, I think it's, it's the way I think about like um, character creation. Sometimes I just say it even to my own characters, even to myself sometimes. <laughs> Please don't be offended, I'm so sorry. Mm. Okay, I'm going to just fill up this one space with this one mushroom. In my head, I'm like thinking, you know when you go to the grocery stores and you have like this little bundle of mushrooms? That's what I want to do. I want to like create like a I haven't drawn the original form yet, but I probably will soon. Okay. Yay, I'm, I'm excited to see that. I love I love seeing other artists' progress and what they're doing. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things I miss in art school because when you're like with fellow artists you can see what everyone's working on and you can like see a lot of different projects unfold and develop and I always found that so fun. I feel like sometimes I like to appreciate art just as much as I like to create it. And yeah, I'm really glad like I, I, I have you around to share your art and you're confident to like talk about it. It's, it's really nice. It, it makes me feel like, oh yes, 
Can you even see it? Sorry. Ta da! <laughs> um, it's. Uh, I don't know if you have a nest cafe, but um, it's basically just instant coffee and I like dump two packets in it. I love it so much. It makes me feel alive. Oh, oh, more information, yes. The taller one is Karen. She's an illusionist. She's actually a large fungus monster in its videos. A scary version of Jack. She just shows herself as a woman so she doesn't scare the people. You already have that. Oh, okay, cool. Um, okay, ah, uh, there's so much to unpack here. Kami is an illusionist. What does that mean? Um, because, like, is like a magician. I think of uh, people who work in like stage performance. So is it like she's in the or she literally creates illusions? Because I watched I don't know I look at Maya and the three and there's this one part where Maya she's basically like the uh, a half like a demigod who's supposed to go into like the other world fight her, her biological mom and like save everyone or else like her world would be killed off and so um, one of the gods that she has to fight is an illusionist and the goddess like um, creates illusions so is it like that like she can create like illusions like Naruto the illusion scape <laughs> Or does she actually create like um, like magic shows? Which type? She creates the illusions. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's really really cool. I think a lot of illusion, uh, illusion creations and stuff. For me, I saw in Naruto where they did a lot of like um, it kind of it kind of like the way they created the environments was like. You get transported to like a dreamscape, or like you think that you're in the same area, like you're in the forest, but then actually you're just like tied to a tree, that kind of thing. So yeah, I, I found like the illusion magic very interesting, but very difficult to depict, like very difficult to draw. Do you have those same issues? Because I feel like it's when you think of illusions, you, it's so close to reality. So I've always been like very scared to create a character which I cannot like follow through with because I feel like um, I won't be able to do it justice. So how how do you create your illusions? Or am I asking too much? I'm so sorry. <laughs> because I like to do a lot of character development. And I like to sort of illustrate the magical powers or even the characters in action to give myself a sense of like, oh, how would they fight? How would they, they respond to the situation? I think I, I tend to choose a lot of safe things like my character has the power to fly or my character has the power to be invisible because I find it's easier to, to just stay in that realm where ah, it's easy to hit. If not, I, I get very judgmental about myself and say, you can't even draw that character, therefore you that character cannot have that ability. <laughs> Maybe I'm limiting myself. Hmm. Anyway. Sorry, I, I'm a huge overthinker. Uh, I think I've really created a bit of a cluster. Okay, so let me see. There's this. There's this. I feel like I might have created a over here. Maybe I'll put some like a block here. So I feel like um, if not, the, the illustration is going to be so unbalanced. I just like 
just imagine that this one person saying one thing or someone else is a different one. Like a normal person would see cameras in it. Well, a spirit or a deity would see that. That's a true form or something that's human. The drawing looks like a cameras. <laughs> but you're kind of right at that yeah okay i need to create some elements that make it less like a forest and more like a tiny cluster but okay 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 so you you see it in relationship to how other characters would view the character ah okay like in the whole story and not just like a standalone okay 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 that makes a lot more sense than like how i would try to depict it as like a whole scene <laughs> a whole fight scene where I would have to employ the character. Can we go? And then can we be like, um, right, depicted differently from different parties. You're very creative. I like that about you. You're very creative. And you really like think out of the box. I think I'm very rigid in my style. Like I, I literally have to have like both my reference images and all of the information that I've thought of and um I like to draw a lot of things off the top of my head but I think because of like the training I got my teachers were always telling me like oh you're you're going off topic so I've I've tried to be like more disciplined but I feel like maybe that's also in my style a little bit. I'm also a bit afraid to experiment unless like I'm hundred percent sure that I can do that one thing. Hi bud, hello. I hope you're having a good time at work. I know work started at nine. I hope you're not it's not too stressful. trying to make this look less like a tiny mushroom forest I'm going to have to create some large elements okay this sorry but so sorry I just saw that you died no 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 it's absolutely fine when you're at work I don't <laughs> expect um, to come in if you're busy hmm. okay so let me see So up above, this mushroom is called the Mycena hematopus. It is, um, it, okay, some of the names that I really like is the Bleeding Fairy Helmet. Like, wow. <laughs> because um, apparently when it gets cut, the sap that comes out of it is blood red. So that is why it comes in between. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, here we go. So this mushroom is grown most of the time on a piece of wood or log. Okay, so that's what I'm missing. I need to actually create my background. I need to create some wood, some wood texture to make it kind of make sense. And then I need this to be inside wood. And it looks less like a tiny forest and more like something that's growing out of wood. Um, I'm 
gonna make this much better. I'm so sorry, I'm, this is literally just a sketch. I usually would do this off camera, but um, today I'm doing quite busy. So I just decided, okay, I'll just stream even the sketch process. In fact, I, I have to tell you, I have no intention of finishing this today because I'm only able to do an hour. So I will be back to continue the sketch tomorrow. So this is just a, this is how I become a blog and this is how I decide what the illustration should look like. So I hope you guys don't mind me I, I've been trying to like make a finished piece and then come in and make well finished as in like a finished sketch. But I really felt like I just like streaming. And I didn't want to like say, "Oh, I'm not gonna stream because I haven't created a sketch yet." So if you don't want this, then I think I'll keep doing this in the future as well. So the next thing I want to do is also block out the tree. Oh, I do hope this looks less like a forest now, but it probably still looks like a forest. <laughs> oh, yeah, my, my microphone is... The music is too loud. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't do that. Yes, yes. Is that better? Is that better? Do let me know. I've reduced it quite a bit. Just create like a nice blue sky. Um, with the cream. Wait, but we're in the middle of a forest. We've traveled far and long, and we're searching for the Mycena. We've discovered it here in the depths of the. Of, of, did I say devil? Depths of the forest. There shouldn't be a blue sky in the background. It should be nice and dark and foresty. Now I can be your beautiful voice. Oh, okay, great. Oh, well, I was apologizing and everything for my lack of talent just now. I, I suppose I should do it all over again. <laughs> but anyway, um, as I was saying, this is just, it's really just the sketch. I will absolutely work on this more later. Um, let's say, Ne uh, tomorrow in the next stream, yes. Um, but I feel like one of the things I like to do when I do my sketches is I like to really block out the colors and get an idea and a sense of what the design should be like. So I, I do apologize that at the moment you see me using things like crayons and colored pencils, but crayons and colored pencils are really good to just get an overall just a feel of what the image and the design will eventually look like um, and then after that uh, I like to build on like the watercolor or the, well not really watercolor the acrylics and the oils yes because once you start adding those ones um, it's a bit harder to decide okay where do I want to take this illustration Most of the time, it's because of the way they interact with the paper. 
so they're quite heavy materials and it's difficult to change direction or erase when you're working with things like uh, acrylics. You can add more but then sometimes that creates like this um, lumpy appearance because you just well I just add too many too many layers and it's not good. Side. There was a whole bunch of really nice colors. I think I'll go off some of this. Oh, this is the problem when you get too many options. Okay, I think I'll go with light green. Oh my gosh, what a what a color! Look at that. This pops out of the page. I wonder if they have like a light green for a pencil. I think. Yeah, they have the same color. Oh, look at that. Oh no, now I'm coloring in on one of the mushrooms. I got too excited about the light green. Okay, I'm gonna have to erase that. Hopefully, um, in the long run, I will be able to make this look less like a forest and more like mushrooms growing on the side of a log. But, um, you know, I think I'm growing to the idea of it being a forest nevertheless. I think a little tiny mushroom forest would be kind of cute. And maybe this is what it wanted to do on me. Just in case, just for the sake of my original idea, I'm going to attempt to create some shadows and lighting just to see if I can create the initial effect that I had in mind, which was for it to be like mushrooms growing on the side of the rock. I really should have drawn the log in first, but I always like to draw in my focus of the painting and the illustration first, just so that I know where to place everything else in the middle, in the background, in the background. rocks. Mm. What else would create the oh right long lines? I think long lines is what creates the oh it reminds me Maybe I should use a crayon. Just to create like a difference between the background and the foreground. Oh, I still think I have a bit of time. I might be able to actually start working on the colors sooner than I thought. Maybe just drop this in. And then we'll see. Because um, I think I have another 30 minutes. Yeah, because I started at like 10 30 or something. Yeah. Okay, I'm kind of in my place. Oops. And every time I do this, I always feel like, okay, I'm just going to make like a standalone illustration, it'll be fine. 
It's not my favorite color paperboard. It's not filling up the whole entire paperboard when you have your colors and illustrations. <laughs> Uh, but like, you know, when it creates like an art piece like this, I almost feel like I want to have like a background or a foreground and I want to make sure that everything is um, properly plotted in and seen very nicely. Okay, I'm starting to get carried away. Uh -huh. So I got some moss, which I think I should kind of extend. Yes, I think there should be moss all the way to that side. And the whole top bit. Should just be mossy. Right. Hmm. Okay, today, should we do oil or should we do, should we do, hmm, it's watercolor. Oh, you mean so I only use oil because it's only oil. I think there's acrylic, no? So it's not it. It's just that. Yes, okay. Wait, no. <laughs> Got too excited. Seems like my only option is oil. Oh, most of it is oil. Isn't it wonderful how it mixes with the previous medium? So maybe just gonna be working on the log and the moss. says, I think the reason tree nymphs or dryers become nymphs is because the Greeks or whoever came up with the nymph tried to cut down the nymphs trees that would outlet sap and the chalk of the nymph. <sighs> that is so sad and so beautiful at the same time. That makes a lot of sense. Because um, until, you know, recently that we have science to explain everything, it would literally look like the tree is bleeding and it would probably kind of become a superstition after a while, like, oh, if you jump on this tree, you're basically killing a creature that bleeds, I think that's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, in general, I think it's it's only good to like chop down or destroy things if and 
when you read it it took you a short time as well so i guess it was also it's like mother way mother nature's way of telling us to think twice about dismissing things wastefully everything has a life and everything should be protected and respected mm, that is such a nice in interpretation mm. yeah and i feel like there's a lot of different things i mean different ways that different types of plants react to different areas so like i know that um, poppies grow around places where things have died or buried so it could also be nature's way of like warning and indicating like this is a place where there's decomposing matter so so be warned and be careful As for like tree nymphs or dryads, you know, I used to study like the fae a lot. I, I really, I really used to like look it up and I did quite a few art projects. And I kind of feel like, yeah, I mean, definitely they would. I think they would have their own presence as well but yeah I could see how like us humans would create stories and tell each other like tales based on like the mushrooms that are in the area and the reactions that we have or the reactions that they have to us or to certain actions and yeah perhaps some of the play have been created from such experiences like the death of a tree or Bleeding of a mushroom, they were interpreted as oh, it's a spirit that has been, you know, hurt or attacked or, you know, destroyed because of human actions. So it would make people think twice about doing something. But I also feel like they themselves, like the spirits, would probably also have made their presence known as well. I kind of feel so as like that and like also maybe if they had also disturbed the, 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 the person who was cutting the tree or maybe if the person who was cutting the tree was also experiencing other disturbances and other so like I, I would imagine it's like the compound or the collective experience of all of the different things that the Fae would have done to create that myth because I also feel like humans, us, we kind of tend to like want to disbelieve or disprove things. So I feel like a lot of these um, these tales are created from many different experiences all compiled into one. And many different stories. Gosh, that makes me want to like share with you. Um, I really find it fascinating how in Greek mythology it like crosses over with some mythology in like Scandinavian literature like you know Thor and Zeus and Odin and the similarities between them and how a lot of things that like I mean also in different parts of the world um, different cultures because I, I remember I was really much into um, anime and the gods depicted their like kappas and all these different creatures. You can see similarities in like Celtic fae and, and so yeah, I mean, perhaps maybe, maybe us humans, we kind of just decided the reactions of nature must be from the gods and we came up with in each of our own cultures different ways of explaining them because science a while ago was not as advanced as it 
was today. So yeah, maybe because um, this particular mushroom is more native to North America. So perhaps if it was present in like Japan, maybe we would get a Japanese nymph or a Japanese dryad as well. Let me see, let me pull up the Wikipedia page. Yeah, it is widespread and common in Europe and North America. Yeah. So, and, and then other species have like a milky or colored latex as well. So I guess different species would also create different types of lore about it based on the person who encounters it. This is Greek myths and myths in general, so interesting. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are so interesting. I have, like, um, from that, the Neil Gaiman Norse mythology. Um, yeah, I really, really like it. If you would like, I don't mind reading some. I noticed that over here um, some people actually do some live reading streams so if you if you really like um, mythology I could instead of drawing one of the days I could read one of the stories and we could discuss it because I don't really have anyone to talk about mythology with and like I'm literally trying to scratch my brain to remember all this stuff and then I just feel like I can't really get my thoughts out because I just want to say so many things about so many things <laughs> like I just went through like thinking about the Japanese mythology that I like to read up about and then the Celtic and the Scandinavian and I'm like oh my gosh it's all fascinating and the my favorite part about it is being able to see how different cultures overlap because if you study history you'll know that there was a period of time where the Silk Road existed and a lot of different cultures would meet and would sell things and would uh, socialize and a lot of information was exchanged so you can imagine like superstitions and folklore probably also was exchanged during that period of time and it just really fascinates me how like despite the fact that they didn't have any internet they were still so interconnected and different things like um, good luck and uh, you know behavior and even like feng shui or like it's basically like how do you make something like in your favor based on how you position things in your house like you can see little things like that like um in the celtic in, in celtic folklore they have something like the kitchen god which also appears in um uh, hinduism and shintoism and um, yeah it's it's just I'm, I'm sure like every single culture has their own way of explaining why that is important but it's so beautiful how it's depicted so differently every single time and it kind of also shows just how much we all kind of value the same thing like we value nature and home and love and I should stop <laughs> I should draw but yeah I, I love I love talking about that kind of stuff but it says yes Greekness is very fascinating I still haven't got a chance to read that well if you're open to it I could read it to you we could have like a book reading session I, I, I think I've read um, what story is that? Read Idrasil and the Nine Worlds, and um, I've read The Children of Loki because, ooh, 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 this is gonna give away a lot of the things that I, I plan for my games and my stories. But yeah, I mean, there's only two of you here, but yeah. Um, I, I do. I do draw a lot of inspiration from Loki, actually. Um, so I, I would be confident to read those two to you. 
I always feel like, um, based on the last time I did readings, I need to read the stories first before I read them out loud. I start to stumble on my words a lot if I haven't seen something and I mean I'm 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 chill with it when I'm like reading Wikipedia pages because I know I'm gonna stumble. Um, I don't think anyone uses Burgundy drop bonnet in like a regular sentence so <laughs> or agaricalus <laughs> and I find oh I find classification of plants and fungi so fascination fascinating sorry like let me read the scientific classification of the mycenae hematopus so the scientific classification its kingdom is a fungi division is a basidimycota its class is a agaricomycetus oh my goodness anyway i want you also to suffer with me let me find where is my um where's my twitch Yes, here. There you go, you guys can also see it. That's what I'm reading. Okay, um its its order is a agaricalus. The family is a mycenaea. Its genus is mycenaea and its species is M hematopus. Its binomial name is Mycena hematopus. Um, and there's a little bracket with a P K P Q K U M eighteen seventy one. I'm guessing that's when it was given all of this information. And then there's some synonyms which vary down there. <laughs> I don't want to read them. <laughs> so yeah, I I find like it adds it adds a bit of confidence to me to be able to read stuff like this and be a bit more informed um and i also don't feel so nervous because i know like okay me and pretty much everyone else would stumble but like when it comes to stories i feel like no i think i have to read it first then i will read it out loud to other people so let me know if you don't mind or you want to hear me read and then i'll read some of the stories and then i'll have some live reading sessions for everyone In the meantime, I kind of feel like I've plotted out the background area a bit. Though there's not a lot of detail, it's really just um, marking out color at this point. Filling in um, all the dead space. Okay, so um, also back to the topic of Greek gods in particular. I think my favorite is um, Amethyst. No, is it Amethyst? Um, well, that's a stone. <laughs> Artemis. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> my favorite is Artemis. I think that is cool. But am I confusing? Oh no, am I doing it again? I'm totally confusing Athena for Am Artemis, aren't I? Artemis. Artemis. No, yes, I was correct. Artemis. In the Greek religion, the goddess of wild animals, the hunt and vegetation and chastity and chocolate. She identifies by the Romans with Diana. Right, yeah. Because the Roman gods and the Greek gods cross over for a bit. Um, not for quite a while. Because of, like, the empire and so on. So, yeah. And I like her because she's usually accompanied by, accompanied by nymphs in the forest, the mountains, the marshes. Besides killing game, she protects it, especially the young. Yeah, and so that was the significance of her title, the mistress of the animals. Yes. Hmm. 
It's actually been a while since I drew gods and goddesses. That makes me feel like, mm, maybe I should do that too. I think I created a goddess called the Universal for one of my older stories. I've written quite a few stories that um, involve the Fae and gods, but nothing that directly talks about or personifies any one particular god. I, I prefer to just work with um, gods or goddesses that I create or invent myself because I'm always worried that I won't do the god or the goddess justice. I'm always worried that I might over or underrepresent them, under them. What are your favorite gods in Greek mythology? <laughs> Sorry, just been talking about things that I like and things that I am thinking. Do, do let me know. Oh, and is there any other mythology that you like aside? Greek mythology, because I would love to just do some readings about other gods and other cultures. Like I really love Japanese folklore and Japanese gods because they're just so down to earth. I totally need to drink some water. Dionysus? You like Dionysus? You know that was my favorite god for a little bit too and not really for the reasons why he was known for but um, I did this this painting of, well not painting, I did this uh, thinking of Dionysus Yeah. Oh, I've, I have it. I have it. Let me, let me, let me pull it up. So I have so many. <laughs> I apologize. I had to burp for a second. Okay. So um, I have so many portfolios because I just spent my whole time like just drawing. So one of the very first portfolios that I ever did was this one. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be working. Try something else. Okay, so let's see. Let me see if you can see some shine to me down here. Oh, maybe if I open it up. This one. See that? Yeah, so this is an inking I did in 2012. Um, it is of Dionysus, and um, yeah, so it's kind of like a transitional painting between like Dionysus getting sort of like 
stabbed in the heart with an arrow that creates a transformative process through the mass and creates like this sense of freedom and peace and like basically shedding off your skin and I don't know if you can see but the, the arrow pierces into the eye of this bird here which is what releases the soul into like a new destiny oh wow it looks amazing thank you so this is what I actually like about Dionysus, not the drinking, not the revelry, not the drugs, but the transformative, the transformation, his representation of transforming something that would otherwise be like bad and dirty and icky into a sense of freedom, a sense of release. And I think this is like the part of Dionysus that is not often talked about, the transformative art of Dionysus. And I, I, I don't know, but that's what Dionysus means to me. And I created this in a series of paintings where this one started talking about like transition, like holding the different parts of myself, like the part which is shy and doesn't want to come out and just wants to stay inside a shell and the part of me which is, um, what to say, I would describe it as kind of so content that they just don't want to bud. They don't want to budge. They don't want to move. They just want to cling to the moon and all of the stars and just be at peace. And then there's me in the center, which is kind of like the balance, like trying to hold everything together and like, come on, let's like do something. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, there's like this hope in this dream for the future, a future where everything is like growing and lush and beautiful. Yeah. And then there's the darkness. So yeah, um, to see it better, I'll put the link of it in the description. Yeah. It's a really, really, really old portfolio. Um, honestly, don't really remember what else is on there but yeah if you want to see the Dionysus piece it is there you can see it clearly um, anything that's there that says it's for sale it's not just saying you know charming <laughs> because um, I haven't upkeep that portfolio for ages but yeah so I, 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 I think Dionysus is pretty good cool what what does Dionysus mean to you I'm curious because Dionysus is actually a very obscure god that I think every time I mention them, nobody really knows who they are. And if they do, they're just like, oh, it's the god who likes to drink. And I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> That's one aspect. Goodness, and it is now 11 30. Time flies when you're having fun. Oh, oh my goodness, I, I want to stay longer. Oh, I can. Uh, later today, I am most likely going to be recording video, so feel to my low fi. The YouTube channel is definitely going to have new content this week. Just, um, I think the, the next two videos that you'll see on the channel is stuff that I actually filmed last year. But last year I was having too many emotional issues to actually like just find the inner strength to just sit down and finish editing. So I gotta go so that I can actually finish editing and upload them. Um, I'm gonna follow up with more content on the other, the other channel that I Oh, goodness. 
just to give myself some idea of my Go read it. Ah. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> this is what I've done for today. Um, next time I come back, uh, which will be tomorrow, I will start working on the main body because also by then I think the programming would have dried up the, the bottom layer so you don't have to worry about that and we can just start to pile on the heat for the mushrooms themselves. Okay, um, again, sorry about the little burp. In fact, I feel like there's another one coming on, so I better end quickly. Oh, it escaped. I'm so sorry. Anyway, um, oh, uh, Charming says, I kind, I kind of interpret him as someone who had a perfectly... Sorry, I'm too excited. I kind of interpret him as someone who had a peaceful start, then to rather violent... To peaceful again, mostly because of how earlier on he was portrayed as an old man with hormones, really young man with hormones, to how everyone sees him now. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, you can you can see the transformations that he's gone through, and I I I like that as well. Yeah, from peaceful to violent to peaceful again. Hmm. That too is a very nice interpretation of him. Yeah, I'm glad you've seen like the challenges he's faced and how they've changed him as a god, as a person, as a deity. And yeah, if you ever do, you should definitely try to put that interpretation of him onto paper and see how that like sort of transforms your view of him as well. I would love to see that as well. Sometimes portraying like violence is quite scary, um, but like I think when I started portraying violence, I realized my violence is not as scary as other people's violence, and so that also helped me to appreciate myself and how I view anger and how I view um, things that scare me, so that I can process it as well. So yeah, I encourage you to like do the same. I would love to see your interpretation of finances because honestly there's not a lot of uh, artwork that is I think interpretive and uh, interesting <laughs> you know <laughs> because a lot of it is like oh very much geared towards like just aesthetics and not a lot of meaning behind it so yeah I would love to see if you if you ever do you know um, but yeah, work on your your OCs. I I'm very interested in seeing more of Jacqueline. Jacqueline? Jackal. Yeah, I I want to see more of Jackal and Cammy. And Ava, if you if you do, I really like the red hair thing. Okay. So uh, with that, I'm going to end this stream now. Thank you so much for being here. I was really nervous about drawing mushrooms in stream, but mm, I'm looking forward to it. I will continue this tomorrow. Until next time, I hope God is having a really lovely day at work, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the evening ahead of you, Germany. As always, this is for me. May your days be magical, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Hi, hi, and I hope you can hear me. I am going to be continuing this lovely painting that I started yesterday. And let me just pull up the chat because I am going to have um, my reference images in front as per usual. And so I won't be, sorry, I won't be looking up all the time. So I just want to make sure that I can confirm that I can see the chat. Okay. <laughs> My handphones are a little bit slow. Okay, let me just close that and open it again. Okay, yes, yeah, so it looks like it is. Yes, it's counting the duration. Let me just try to mute as much as possible. Um, yeah, and I want to pull up some lovely 
music to listen to. Um, I know you guys have the audio I created, but I can't hear it. I created it for you guys to enjoy. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's see. I'm scrolling on YouTube. How about I also share with you the YouTube video I'm listening to? Yeah. So just in case you want to like overwhelm your senses with a lot of sound, I'm going to put this in the chat. Okay, so today I'm enjoying this. Today, I, I is listening to this playlist on YouTube. So, I really love to listen to different playlists, and I'm actually going to go ahead and sh and save this. Um, I love Lo-Fi. Clearly, because it's in my name. Um. So I've now saved that. Okay, I'm so sorry I can't play it during the stream because obviously um, I don't want to get in trouble with Twitch. So yeah, you can listen to it um, on your own. But of course there is already audio. What was that? What dropped? Yeah, there's already audio in the background. So yeah, <laughs> if you don't want to listen to that, that's totally fine. <laughs> You can listen to the piano that I came up with myself on GarageBand. Okay, um, it's so strange, but the just adjust this. There we go. Okay, okay, so, um, something I wanted to do was I wanted to for every single stream that I create the art piece read out a little bit about the mushroom that I am drawing. I feel like it's so important to educate myself about the things that I draw and illustrate because in future I will want to include this in projects like um, my comics and whatnot. So um, let me just read to you the Wikipedia page of the mushroom we're going to be working on today. So today's mushroom is the Mycena hematopus. I feel like I'm getting a little bit better at reading that out loud. Um, okay, so it is commonly known as the Bleeding Fairy Helmet, the Bergen Drop, Burgundy Drop Bonnet, or the Bleeding Mycena. Um, it's a species of fungi in the family of Mycenaceae of the order Agaricalus. <laughs> it is widespread and common in Europe and North America, and it has been collected in Japan and Venezuela. So I read the first bit. Today I want to read um, some other character characteristics of it that I didn't read yesterday. So let's read about the fruiting bodies of the Mycena. Um, so I apologize. I'm going to read terribly because I'm going to read this for the first time as well. The fruit bodies of the Mycena Hematopus are the reproductive structures produced by cellular threads or hypia, which grow in rotting wood. The shape of the cap of the fruit body will vary depending on its maturity. Young caps or buttons are ovoid, egg-shaped. Ovoid? Oh, I just learned a new word. Ovoid, that's interesting. To conical. Later, they are campanulate bell-shaped. Okay, so ovoid is egg-shaped. Ah, in the world of my mice, my, myself, is, is it mycology? Let me just check. 
M Y C M Y C O L O G Y. Yeah, mycology, the branch of biology concerned with the study of fungi, including their genetic and biochemical properties and their taxonomy, and their use to humans as a source of tinder, traditional medicine, food, and and the guns, as well as their dangers such as toxicity or infection. Oh, that is such a long phrase, sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, in mycology, you would say ovoid for egg-shaped or campanulate for bell-shaped. Okay, let's continue. And as the fruit body matures, the margins, cap edge, lift upwards so that the cap becomes somewhat flat with an umbo, umbo, a central nipple-shaped bump. <laughs> umbo. I like the word umbo. It's a very um, defining. <laughs> the fully grown cat can reach up to 4 centimeters in diameter. The surface of the cat initially appears dry and covered with what appears to be a very fine whitish powder, but it soon becomes polished and moist. Mature caps appear somewhat translucent and develop radial grooves varying the position of the girls underneath. The color of the cap is reddish or pinkish brown, often tinged with violet, and paler towards the edges. The margin is wavy like the edge of a scallop and may appear ragged because of lingering remnants of partial feel. Oh gosh, I just feel like I want to read so much more and learn so much more. But I also need to start the drawing soon. So um, if any of you come later and you'd like to read up more about this beautiful mushroom, let me just put it here. Okay, so this is the wiki of the mushroom we are drawing today. So yeah, um, I'm also going to be uploading these videos onto my um, YouTube channel. So if I if I lean like this, you can't see me see my face. Let me just does that help? Okay, yeah, because I often lean this way, ever so slightly. Ah, <laughs> put it over here. Yeah, because if I sit up like that, and I mean like that. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so I'll try to remember, and in the future also put this in the link in the description. Alright, um, let us start drawing. Now, um, please forgive me if you chat and I miss it or I take a while, because um, I'm going to be looking at the art piece now. Oh, let me just make sure that it's within frame because I'm going to pull it and position it. This is comfortable. Bring you closer. Okay. Oh, maybe my chair is too far back. Okay. Let me push this. Let me push this up. Yes. Okay. Enough space for my arm as well. Alright, let's start drawing. So I am going to be working on the mid the center area. Yesterday I started with the background. Um, Charming was here yesterday. Uh, they are a regular viewer of mine on YouTube and they have also been coming here and supporting me on art streams. And they said that it kind of looks like a forest <laughs> of mushrooms at the moment of Mycena. So I created like this background where it's supposed to be like a tree trunk with moss and everything. But at this point, I kind of feel like maybe I'm forcing it too much. Maybe I need to just allow the painting to just evolve on its own. So I'm not really going to be upset with myself if... It turns out to be a lot less the way I wanted it to be, which was supposed to be like the mushrooms are growing from the tree trunk, I mean the, the fallen tree log. But anyway, I'm still going to try to aim for that, but it's, it's fine if it just 
evolves into a mush uh, into a forest of mushrooms. So yeah, I'm using art set. I I think I mentioned that. I'm not sure. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> um, which is a really nice um, digital tool, drawing tool that creates painterly like effects. Maybe I should use a palette. I keep telling myself that I'm going to eventually create like a custom palette and so on, but the days keep falling and rolling into each other and I never get around to actually setting up my 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 palette the way I want it to be. So if I keep jumping around, it's mainly just because I'm trying to create what I think is right. Ooh, I like that. I like how the crayon kind of like bleeds into... <laughs> Hi, bud. Yes, yes. More mushrooms. The same illustration as yesterday. Um, so I'm hoping that today I'm going to finish it. Get closer. Mm. I'm actually thinking I kind of want to, I'm not sure how to. But I kind of want to change the size. go to paint wait I'm so sorry let me just put this down flat long oh to adjust I have to unlock it yeah I always get to this part I'm like mm, I want to change this I want to change that and then all oh, right okay let me see what can I use alternatively that won't really Maybe color pencil. I'm not sure. Oh, what happened? Did I do something strange? I hope not. Yeah, the color pencil does not work at all. It's working underneath the other paint. Okay, never mind. Okay. Mushy, mushy, mushy. How are you doing today, bud? I know you're at work. Is everything okay? Is everything going smoothly? I hope you don't have too much um, stress in terms of your workload today. God says layers and then I'm doing self-directed learning. Oh, that's nice. That's good. I like that. I like that sense of initiative. Fantastic. I'm all for learning. I feel like education is so important. I also feel like the glare of the light is causing it, causing me a bit of anxiety. Can't quite see over the reflection. Oh no. Okay, this is actually much better. Let me see if I can do it like this. Yeah, I think the slight tilt is better. 
Let me just see if you can see. Because I've literally changed the position. Oh, it's on project management. Okay, that's cool. I think I'll leave it here. So what areas on project management are you focusing on today? Uh, that's just going to be the last question that I'll let you do your work. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm curious. It looks dark. Uh, okay. Well, that's with the light shining over. I hope that brightens it up a bit. The project kickoff part. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, it's not on because um, there'll be too much glare. And then I can't see a thing on the iPad. And the iPad does this wonderful thing where it just auto-adjusts itself to oblivion. <laughs> This one rock has so many color tones in it. Kind of just wanted to blend that in and see what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to go over it with a different color. Now my eye the brightness. I'm sorry. You can see how bright my face is. The light is like literally shining in my face. Um, if I turn the living room, the I, I actually tried it the last time and I don't know, it's just like the environment for me. I feel like I need to be a little bit in like a little cave when I draw. I don't know if that makes sense. So far I like this. Though I think if I had like a warm light, like a warm ring light <laughs> that I used to have, but I have no idea where it's gone. That one was perfect. <laughs> Just a really nice warm ring light that I bought for my work. <laughs> Hi Charming! Charming says the drawing looks cool. Thank you. So I'm just focusing on the rocks. Because when I start drawing all the mushrooms, all the detail is going to go there. So I just want to block in the rocks, give them some definition. How are you doing today, Charming? I hope you had a good dinner. But today is working on project management. She is so hard working. She's going to be doing self-learning, which is so cool. I love to do self-learning. That's why um, before I start each stream, I want to like just educate myself about the mushroom, types of things that are unique about it, just so that when I work on like projects in the future, I have this like foundation about the things that I'm drawing and also how um, the objects I'm drawing affect the environment. One of the things I learned about like creating different kinds of um, environments is everything kind of relates to everything else and knowing how something reacts in the environment really helps to move the story along. Like, I think Ban and I, we watched this anime about how animators in Japan um, get started and even develop projects. And 
there was this one episode that really stuck with me. It was the episode where this creator, this animator, was struggling to draw a cat. And they actually went out and found cats to study and just see like the movements. And by doing that, the animator actually finally was able to create a very like lifelike uh, cat. And the way the cat would behave when they encountered other characters made way more sense and looked less robotic because the animator took the time and the trouble to go out and study cats and pet cats and look at cats and yeah that really stuck with me and I realized if I'm going to draw something I gotta really know what I'm drawing interact with it and unfortunately when it comes to things like mushrooms in Singapore there isn't a lot of fungi that is unique and if it does exist it it, ex it grows in like these forested areas which are cordoned off and you can't explore them or access them so for me going online is the best way that i can get information and educate myself because um there's a lot of restrictions everywhere just to like go look at mushrooms in the forest they're like no no, it's not safe. You don't go there. The forest is not good. <laughs> um, says, I like that episode too. Slinky for a creature, not robots. Need to capture. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, it stayed with me. And I started putting a lot more emphasis on spending time researching than just jumping on a project. Like even the game that I think I've told you, basically I've told both of you that I'm working on. Um, I've spent a lot of time working on the script and researching like the kind of neighborhood I want Darling to be in, the kind of family, researching what that would look like. And I'm it, the game is so, so not done, but I feel happy that I took the time to like just study all these little nuances so that when I create the environment finally, like literally this in itself is also studying um, the natural environment and habitat of where this character could possibly live so that when I finally start working on it, I create something that I'm proud of. It might not be like amazing, but it's something that like makes sense and doesn't leave people going like, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't fit together the way it should and stuff like that. Hmm. Oh, I really love how like the paint does this. Like it just blends in with the crayon. This is why like choosing colors correctly is all the difference. Oh, looks so good. Every single color I added counts. The interaction is so nice. And this is what you cannot create. You see that beautiful textured rock face? You can't create that in Procreate. So that's why I, I do certain things in Procreate and then certain things over here. Okay, Charming says, I mostly jump I mostly just jump into things without really knowing what I'm making. Hmm, that's okay too. That's okay too. Um, I don't know if you care about horoscopes or stuff like that, Charming, but um, uh, I'm a Pisces, sun rising, like my birth month is a Pisces, but I have a lot of restrictive signs <laughs> everywhere else, like my moon is a Virgo, my work ethic Mars is a Capricorn, so I need despite the fact that I'm like very dreamy and I come up with ideas all the time for me to work efficiently I need structure so I think it I think what's best is just to do whatever works best for you because a lot of the times my teachers were always telling me oh just go with the flow just go with the flow but because of the way my mind thinks I don't I don't process things well when I'm just thrown into the the deep end and then like just swim just swim I, it doesn't work for me so, but I realize it works for a lot of other people. In fact, a lot of artists find 
a lot of inspiration by the spur of the moment and you can see that like people like um, impressionisms they always would go out into the countryside and they would capture the light and the impression of the light on objects so you can't get that by meticulously studying you have to get that by going out there and just absorbing the moment so yeah it's totally fine that you just jump in it, that, that's probably what works for you and that's good hmm. But it says research helps level up accuracy. That is true too. But also my partner, Butter Moon, is just as Virgo minded as me. So <laughs> that is also a little bit biased. <laughs> the reason why Butter and I um, get along so well is because we're both Virgo moons. So it's easy to talk when we both have the similar work ethic. We're both very critical and very like, mm, must study, must focus. <laughs> but I, I, I can also understand like the free spirit side being Piscean. I, I, I feel like yeah, it, it's good to let loose and let go. It's just that because this like art for me is like work, as well as play a lot more of my Capricorn starts to come out and I start to like overanalyze everything and research helps to calm me down, helps to ground me, helps to focus me and actually makes it fun for me, you know? <laughs> if not, I'll flounder around and feel like, I don't know what to do next. Somebody tell me what to do next. <laughs> um. Well, okay, for for um, advice on how to work as an artist who does things freely and ex um, expresses themselves uh, within, like, just, like, impulsively, I do remember a teacher telling me that um, the best way to develop oneself is to keep a journal and to just freely draw every single day, which I think is what you're already doing, Charming. I can see uh, a lot of your studies and your character's uh, creation on Instagram. So you're, you're in the right direction for yourself. And um, I know that that is a very good way of working for people who are impulsive artists because that was the one thing that I hated the most having to open up a journal and just draw something at the top of my head I was always like no you can't make me I want to go to the library and I want to study and I want to do some research and my teachers will always be like no just sit down for an hour and just come up with something and I'll be like what <laughs> just come up with something <laughs> no structure <laughs> so yeah um, that's what they would tell me to do so if you want any advice on how to just freely express yourself that would definitely be it have journals um, what else do they say to do or go out and like look at trees and just draw anything you see that piques your interest, your curiosity. That's just to to help you get better at your art, not necessarily to help you become more creative. Um, because like when you draw impulsively, you start to n notice little things like how the light falls on like the rock. Like for example, here this part is lighter and this part is darker because I'm imagining that the lighting is coming from this corner and you can even see that I've put a placer here by making this the lighter green and then this the darker green yeah so you start to notice stuff like that like how the light hits this and that and it starts to become a part of you in fact it starts to become like subconsciously something you look for so Oh, I'm sure. I, I'm sorry. I'm sure you didn't even ask for advice, but <laughs> I love to give it. I love to just share. I feel like that's half the point of learning and educating oneself is to go and pass on that information. Okay, let me count. That's a rock here. There's a tiny one there. There's this rock. There's this rock. This rock, and then this rock. And is the rest of them just mushrooms now? 
Yeah, I think we're hitting mushroom zone. Okay. Ah, oh, you're welcome. Huh. Okay. Now I need to remember. Oh, um, I learned a new word today. I learned the word. Um, where is it? Umbo. Umbo. Um, let me read to you this part because I don't know if you were here just now when I started and I was reading the description. But basically, and I think this might this might amuse bad in particularly um so this is the description of the mushroom itself and they say that actually okay i learned three i, I learned three words young caps or buttons are ovoids ovoids let me write this in the chat um ovoid which is an egg shape. So in mycology, instead of saying egg shape, they say ovoid um, to conical. Conical is like sort of a little bit more, you know, like the typical mushroom shape that you would see. So ovoid to conical. And then um, they later are cam campanulate which is bell-shaped, campanulate. What a word. Campanulate. Campanulate? Cone-like, yes. Cone-like, cone-like. And then, um, as the fruit body matures, the margins, the cap edges, lift upward so that the cap becomes somewhat flat with an umboy. Uh, no, umbo, umbo. I said that right, umbo, which is a, a central nipple shaped bump. <laughs> umbo. <laughs> um, bo. The more you know. <laughs> Mycology. So crass. <laughs> The fully grown cap can reach up to 4 centimeters, which is um, 1 and 5 eighth inch in diameter. So cute. I'm going to just copy and paste this whole part into the description for all of you to read. Wow, mushrooms are so weird and funny. I know, right? I know. And I think because in mycology, there's so many different kinds of mushrooms most likely in order to just refer to different types of mushrooms in scientific ways they've come up with these interesting or they're using these interesting words to just denote the different types and shapes so that they can classify the mushrooms accordingly so that was taken from wikipedia yeah i i just love i love how science can give us a more in-depth idea about something that basically just grows out of the ground and you wouldn't really care about it or think about it when you are walking around in the forest you most likely just step on it well I would most likely just step on it but now it gives me such a deeper appreciation for it and also by reading up the Wikipedia page I now know that um, the the younger it is the deeper the color the older it is it um, where does it say that? Let me see. Um, ah, yeah, it says it's here. The, the color of the cap is reddish or pinkish brown, often tinged with violet and paler towards the edges. So you can imagine that when it's younger, it would most likely be um, pinkish or reddish all the way around because it's an ovoid shape and you can't really see the edges. And then when I draw it to draw something more mature, I would make it... Uh, uh, what, is, what is the word again? A companulate, com, 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 <laughs> a com shape, and then um, I would not forget the umbo, and then I'll make it paler towards the edges. <laughs> ah, 
delight 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 and so in the future when i recreate this or i draw this for other illustrations um keeping things like that in mind will help me to remember like okay this mushroom should look like this and it should look like uh, as a young and look like that as an older one <laughs> so happy <laughs> charming says i wonder if you can eat them you know what? We can find out right now. I haven't actually read about the edibility, so I'll just scroll right down. And it says, okay, edibility. Although some sources claim that the Mycena, the Mycena is edible, it is hardly worth collecting because of its small size. Other sources consider the species inedible or recommend avoiding consumption since most of them have not yet been tested for toxins. The taste of the mushroom is mild to slightly bitter. Okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and um, if I get... Okay, if I just take a ruler really quickly. I'll be right back. Hold on. Oh my gosh. My sister's is back. So based on the dimensions, the characteristics, um, the caps are diameters between, like, basically it gets about 1 cm. 1 cm. It's like that. Oh, can, can, you, can you even see? I'm just shoving it closer to the camera. Uh, yeah, so you can see like the measurement of 1 cm is really small, like basically like the diameter of my finger. I don't really think that's a mushroom that will give you much nutrition. Um, perhaps if you gather them in a lot, but they only grow in small clusters. And it's, it's terrible to eat something that hasn't been tested for toxins because you wouldn't know whether it would react well to you or badly to a loved one and that would be awful. So I, I, I think I agree. It's probably not worth becoming the test bunny <laughs> just to see if you can eat it. Uh, Chami says, I can see it. I didn't know mushrooms could get that small. I know, right? Ah, I'm so glad to be doing this series. I'm so glad to be able to share this with you. I'm so excited knowing that um, you, you learned something. Like I love learning stuff. And yeah, I, I think that's why... I'm also thinking I really overdid it with these mushrooms. <laughs> this is exactly why I shall educate myself further because I think I've drawn way too many mushrooms in one specific area. So the next time I draw this, I'll just draw it in smaller clusters and I'll definitely take note that th basically if this was like one centimeter then these ones are just really tiny like maybe 0 0.1 centimeter <laughs> so it doesn't make sense this is really like um how to say um art taking artistic liberties in the design so yeah the more i know Oh, which also means, okay, then I should actually start low. Because if the smaller ones are darker, that means that the, 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 the gradient should start darker from here and go up lighter to create, like, um, depth. So let me just, um, oh, and they're also called burgundy, burgundy drop bonnet. So that also gives me an idea. I need to start with burgundy. Yeah, something like a dark red. Okay. Nice. Oh, that's this is a bit odd. Something has happened to like the pressure. I wonder if it's because the paint digitally has dried or something and it's creating tension. Hmm. Okay. 
So I know what Bad is up to today. What are you up to today, Charming? Um, I think I have another. Oh my gosh, no, I have another 20 minutes. No, 17 minutes. Am I doing math? It's 10.53. I end at 11.15. I have 18 minutes. Oh no. Can I finish this in 18 minutes? Okay. I need to focus. And it's so strange. The color's not quite coming out. Hmm. Okay. Chami says, I'm working on more character sheets. Nice. I like that. Ah, oh, it's so nice to know that you're working on art. I feel like I feel like we're 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 back or I'm I'm back in art school and I'm doing art with my friend. It's so nice. Ah. I'm still working on the discard. Um I I actually might not be able to get it up today because today I have to film yeah I'm, I'm filming um a bunch of videos because i like to film them on one day and then edit them and post them on another day mm, so aj i i don't know if you take note of anyone who comments on the videos but i take note of pretty much everyone and i think aj comments quite often and suggests quite often like video ideas um if you want to you can as well um so they asked like a month over ago if I could look into Oddcore. And so that I have done. And oh boy, Oddcore is quite odd. It's like a collection of weird core and a bit of like it dips into a bit of horror and it dips into a, a bit of uh, dream core. And so that's that's been interesting looking at that. And then I'm doing more weird core. Um, I got a lot. Oh my goodness. It's been so long since I did a weird core react video. So I have a lot. <laughs> I'm going to have to like really cut it down to make sure that I, do, I don't like take hours. And then after that, I want to look at um, Princess Core, which I think you suggested. Was it you? I think so. I think I, I briefly saw like there was some new comments and I was like, oh, Princess Core, that sounds interesting. Um, but I, I'm kind of thinking that a lot of the sweeter, nicer cores I might actually put on the the other channel because I, I am when I first started Fuel to My Lo-Fi, I it, it really was supposed to be what fuels my lo-fi. And then it kind of became something like um me wanting to sort of push my lo-fi, my boundaries, my little area a little bit further just so that I, I I don't stay in like one place and sort of just marinate in really good feels all the time. I wanted to see like what a bit of darkness looks like, what a bit of um, scary monsters look like. And that has been great but it also means that I feel like the channel now is is very much saturated with content that won't help you relax if you know what i mean like <laughs> it's a lot of like um darker content and i i don't want to stop i don't want to like um remove it i i think it's interesting and it's good to have an outlet for like rant art and darker content but i want to also have a place where i can kind of go back to the reason why i started having a channel in the first place which was to create or to look at stuff that really fuels my lo-fi and so yeah i think a lot of the stuff that i personally like to do like drawing and playing minecraft i'm gonna put it on the other channel which i know you follow already so i hope you don't mind but i i do i think i really do want to look at princess core i i love um what was it fairy core and I really actually enjoyed Royal Call, which is coming out today, tonight. Um, so yes, I'll do Princess Core, but 
princess core cottage core and all of the really nice lovely like age regression videos as well i want to look at those again i'm gonna put those all on the other channel the i night channel so that i just have one place where if anyone wants to watch something that is relaxing and fun and not scary in the slightest bit they can go to the other channel and it's just nice lovely pretty things yeah so I hope that's okay <laughs> okay so kind of blocked in the colors but it says um then i will try playing princess quest one two and three on five nights at freddy's for you for the horror loving side of princess car oh yes that would be great but i really want to play it with you you know what i mean because um i just feel like if i'm if i'm not like participating in it like how can i say it's my video like i literally may as well just let people which i probably will do in all the descriptions go to your channel and support your content because you know you're also a content creator bud um so definitely like if you're gonna play for my channel um i would definitely want you to let me be there and let me disturb you <laughs> all throughout the gameplay so unless you're willing to have me as the worst backseat driver i think it's there's no need you, you just you do it and then i'll just like share it everywhere and like let people know that you did it okay now let me go to a slightly brighter color. Ooh, I like that. Okay, I think another thing that I need to do is I need to start um, filling up all the white splotches and the white gaps. Because I'm moving closer and closer towards a point where I'll no longer be addressing the background. The background will be, it is what it is. <laughs> I always feel like when I create stuff, I get to a point where the background is what it is, and then I don't touch it anymore. I feel like it's good because then it becomes um, a supporting role to the foreground, which is the focus. You can see it, right? Sometimes I wonder. Yeah, okay. But it says, I want to nap nap before lunch. So sleepy, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Before I streamed, I actually had like a five minute nap and it kind of helped. But then also, I kind of poured myself this whole cup of like monster and. Ah, oh, vitamin C juice. So it, it went so far as to like just help me get by. <laughs> if you want, you can have some monster, this monster in the fridge. It's not a lot, but it's like a decent amount. All these tiny little areas. <laughs> Tentacle cat.
Okay. I think this corner also needs a bit of green. I'm most likely going to have to go over a lot of things again in the future because I'm just trying to assess based on what I can distinctly see is and isn't going to eventually become mushroom. But I, I kind of feel like if I overlap or have to redraw over a certain area in the future, it's probably okay. Because I think the one thing that I like the most is the fact that in nature, everything sort of relates to everything. So there's always like some kind of color reflection somewhere here or there. And after like watching a few other people drawing, I realized if you don't like create relationships between like colors, the painting or the illustration doesn't have as much depth or familiarity. Like it kind of feels like cell shading where you just sort of like plonk colors directly onto the canvas and have a few layers of highlights. Which is good for like if you're creating animation because then it's easy to animate different parts without having to do too much um, programming of different details. Yeah, like that. I can't. Why? Why won't you paint? Okay, maybe I just had to get in real close. But it says, no, cannot have monster. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Alright. Ah, time goes so fast. Sometimes I'm like, do I want to have a coffee? Because when I blink, the time would have gone by already. But there's so many times when I just feel tired for no reason. I'm like, okay, I have a coffee. And then I don't sleep at night. <laughs> uh, so I, I guess maybe that's why you don't want to have a monster. It's too close to lunch, and then after lunch, you'll probably feel full and you have energy, so you don't want to have monster because you don't want to have too much energy and then bounce off the walls. Oh, by the way, you know, I'm really liking today's playlist, not the one that you guys are listening to from the stream, but the one that I put in the chat. It's very calming. Can I see the mushrooms forming now? Especially since these are the larger, more mature mushrooms, which will have a umbo very soon. Uh, I need to make sure that I leave some area that is going to be white tipped. The below here, I don't think I need to do that. I love how naturally, because I use blue lines, the colors blend in together and have a, a violet hue, 
which is perfect because that's what I was reading about when I was looking at the mushrooms how they have this violet hue to them and I think that's what I love about mixed media even when it's not like something like this which is digital when you use different medias on a canvas you get like this kind of effect where the pencil merges in with the paint and has these really awesome effects that this transition throughout the whole piece. Okay. So I think around here. Ah, uh, I love you too. Oh, and that means I'm down to two minutes. Two minutes left, guys. Thank you so much for coming back again, um, Charming. Thank you so much for coming back again, Bud. <sighs> I apologize. I can't believe I'm not gonna finish this. I was thinking at the back of my mind. Okay, this is this is easy. You're gonna you're gonna do this. It's gonna be fine. I'm gonna spend an hour. It's gonna be done. You'll be in and out and. You'll finally have something to put into your collection so that you can document the mushrooms. Because I'm going to be creating um, two scenes in this third game I'm working on, which I have not spoken about except to specific people, um, which has this mushroom bus stop. Shall I show you? Yeah, I'm gonna show you. Cause in the last minute before I end, I've written yet another game. Ah, uh, my ideas never end. So this is the sketch. Ah. <laughs> Only you guys are seeing this and then anyone on my YouTube channel. Sorry. It is the well and the poison bottle scene. But um, I don't know if you can see that. It's the poison bottle. So I've been wanting to do research about different mushrooms because I wanted to figure out things like poison and the effects to just move the story along because all these little things kind of lead into like how does this react with that and so on. <gasps> no! I accidentally... Oh, but I think, and I don't have an undo button. What have I done? Oh my goodness. That was sudden. I just accidentally swiped and smudged the paint oh, is it very obvious <laughs> yes yes it is oh that's peculiar okay well oh thank you but i kind of just swiped it I don't know if you can see, but it's just, I probably can't really see, but it's totally smudged it. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so that's as much as I've gotten done today. Um, 
I, I really wish I had more time, but I have to go and film some videos and do some stuff. So I only ever have an hour to stream, which is also why it takes me so long to finish anything because of all the other things that I plan to do every single day. But anyway, never mind. I'm so glad to be able to spend an hour with you, Charming. And I'm so glad to spend an hour with you, Bad. This is so nice. I feel like coming here and streaming has really set the mood for the rest of the day. And I feel motivated. So really, thank you for being here. Hmm. All right. And then until next time, which is going to be tomorrow. Wait, is it going to be tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I do have to say that tomorrow, because I have so many things planned, I want to do like... Yeah, as I said, Princess Core and then like a bunch of other stuff. And then I need to edit. So I won't be streaming tomorrow. So until... What day? Until Thursday. Yes, until Thursday. May your days be magical. And I will see you next time. Thank you for saying that. Yes, bye. You have a good day too. Bye. I've restarted the stream. I hope that it's better. It says down there that it's excellent, so I hope it is. I hope it's excellent. Um, yeah, so let me just continue. So, yes, I was really obsessed over uh, Demon Slayer to a point where I think for a long time, any opportunity I had to sort of like um, do anything with Bud was peppered with but as in my girlfriend, was peppered with, can we also watch this? Can we also do that? And I felt like, personally, uh, it's, it's, it's great to... Well, I'm getting messages from Twitch. Nice. Okay, can we not be there? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's good to like want to share uh, that part of your life with your significant other, but like when it becomes all you ever talk about, I think I got quite boring after a while and I said um, also you know trying to learn about what my partner likes what are her fandoms and I think it became more of a mutual appreciation when it wasn't just every single opportunity ever anytime I have free time it's just that yeah and I got to learn more about what she likes and it became less of like a like an annoyance to her and more of like oh okay this is interesting this is this is important to I I and I think I should like look into it a bit. Next, take a bath. I think like self care is so important and it's so easy to overlook things like that. Especially like um there was this one time when I was obsessed over Sims. Oh, I've told the story to so many people. I'm just gonna tell it to you now because even like even up until today, I'm still so surprised that I could be that obsessed to a point where I ended up in that state. So I once was playing Sims, and um, it was like when I was a teenager, so I was like sixteen, seventeen, and um, I was really into the game and I had just finished my exam so I really didn't have to be anywhere or do anything in particular and so I just thought okay this is the perfect opportunity I just finished school it's like the holiday season right now um, actually I think I had just finished O level so I really had nowhere to go and nothing to do so I was like okay I'm just gonna indulge and I indulged so much and so hard to a point where I remember my mom asking me had I gone for this particular thing because you know it was uh, date specific and not only had I not gone for it I hadn't gone anywhere for two weeks and I hadn't showered for at least three days and oh my gosh that memory stayed with me when I was so horrified because I literally thought it had only been two days since I started playing the game but like in game because you know time passes my real life had just totally stood still and I hadn't seen anyone, I hadn't done anything. It was really awful. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I kind of feel like ever since then, taking a bath also, like, helps me remember, like, okay, the day has passed, the day has ended, I need to get up, I need to, like, show a bit of self-love and self-care for myself and do something that's going to make myself happy, healthy, and also like smell good and feel good so yeah I, I, I really believe in the po that cleaning yourself and maintaining your own personal hygiene is so important just to also help you have a break 
and like step away from the computer and just focus a little bit on your own self and your own like hygiene so that you also don't get sick you know so that's why I tell myself though it doesn't work every single day like sometimes when I'm like really really deep inside the 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 bottomless pit of inspiration it can be quite hard to turn myself away and sometimes I just forget to or you know but yeah I think that's why this year I don't want to do that this year I want to try and put my mental health and my physical health first and make sure that I maintain at least a daily activity of like self cleanliness and so on no matter how much I, I feel like, no, I just I just need to spend like one or two more hours just watching this anime or just indulging in this new singing passion. I mean, it's this new passion I have for this new band and so on. Okay, so next one. Oops, my phone has timed out. Um, circulate the economy. So this one I don't really understand circulate the economy um maybe i should like read more into like what they have said specifically about this one um because i just saw it and i was like so inspired and i wanted to just talk about it so i think this one um i will look into uh let's move on to the next one uh support your oshi while you can now i don't know what oshi is if if anyone knows just leave it in the comment section below because i'm gonna upload this to youtube as well so, um, and right now there's no one on stream with me. I think it's just me, right? Yeah, so I can look forward to your comments later uh, when I upload it to my channel. Okay, next, um, appropriate contribution. So, my interpretation of this is like you need to, well, I need to really analyze how much money I'm spending on something, how much money I'm spending on like a fandom or um, a concept. And on my Feel to My Lo-Fi channel, I go through so many different kinds of aesthetics. I'm obsessed with so many of them. And so so often, like especially like mushroom core or like goblin core, I tend to want to spend every single dollar I ever earn on just like clothes and and aesthetically pleasing things and it can be quite hard you know showing some self-restraint but yeah i think definitely this year i would like to show a bit of self-restraint and only get what i really need and not just overindulge because i just fell in love with like the latest new um core like oh i recently got um got some tiktoks suggested to me in my feed about like uh, spirit core which led me to look into ghost core which I'm gonna do a video about because it's so cool <sighs> so much beautiful Victorian lace yeah so that's another reason why I'm doing this <laughs> these these resolutions I'm hoping to like uh, limit myself a little bit so that I don't go overboard and like uh, just oh no Look what I've done up there. Oh dear, I better fix this. Okay. Now, I'm not actually quite sure why my brush has been so strange and just jumping around with the colors and stuff. I, I think it might be the, the fan in the background. I'm not sure. Okay, I think that sort of takes care of that. So, it's not really uh, what I want it to happen. Because now you can kind of see like the colors are a bit too thick on top there. It's supposed to be a lot more muted and... Hmm, okay. What to do? These things happen. <laughs> Alright, um, next we have enjoy and continue so i'm guessing like this is well to me um taking the time to enjoy and and not feel down or just give up because like 
um, sometimes I also feel like it can be quite overwhelming uh, as a as a fan when so much content is put out there and I just feel like uh, I can never get this or I can never get that like especially when it comes to like Studio Ghibli there's so many movies and like my threshold for like consuming and um, dwelling on entertainment is very low because it can get very overstimulated quite easily and so sometimes I just feel like when I see how other people are like enjoying stuff and reacting and they're so much more knowledgeable than me I find like oh you know maybe I don't deserve to watch it or maybe I don't deserve to interact with it because like oh my goodness what do I know so I do I do try to remind myself like nah it's okay I mean okay fine I, I might be bad at this so I don't understand that like um the FNAF uh, security breach oh so many things that I'm a bit um oh. Give me a second. There's so many things about it that I'm a bit um, not sure or not certain about. And I think it's fine because, like, my girlfriend has been playing it. She is a uh, Badawin official. And I think she has really shown me, like, you don't have to know everything about something to enjoy it, to be a fan of it. And you can still have a lot of fun in it engagement with like new and interesting things without being a complete expert as long as like the passion is there and you have people to share the moment with so yeah that's what I take to mean um, enjoy and continue then next is um, good relationships so yeah definitely this year I really want to develop more good and positive relationships in my life because like last year there was a lot of emphasis for me on like fixing you know what's been lost and uh, developing like a more sustainable living situation because you know the whole stuff that's happened all over the world and I feel that finally Ban and I have gotten into like a nice rhythm where we are looking after each other and we're looking after ourselves and we're progressing in our own personal lives and so I really like that and I want to now move forward and start working on some of the stuff that I was working on previously which is like connecting with people that actually care about my work and care about me and focusing my time and effort and energy on like doing that and you know hoping for like a positive outcome for all of those things so yeah um, next is I am me others are others so I think this is quite straightforward and it it makes sense but at the same time sometimes it can be hard sometimes it can be really hard because when I see like really amazing artists out there and I look at what they're doing and where they are in life right now and I'm like oh you know why 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 do I suck um I really do have to keep reminding myself that like okay look I, I your life has been very different the opportunities you've been given have been so different um, and the situations that you've been in have been so different same as them and so I can't keep looking at them and going like how come I suck because um, who knows how they would have performed in the same situation I, I've been in and you know it's it's really it's really up to me to fix my or change my or direct my destiny and I really can't like look at other people's lives and be like that person is such an amazing artist I want to emulate that because in the past I would I think in the past I've heard a lot of advice just like oh have all these um role models and then like you know work towards it and I think it's good to have role models I think it's good to work towards like what you think your life should be but sometimes it becomes a bit obsessive and so I've I've decided to just take a seat back from doing that and instead just going like okay what what do I see my life as and I think that has helped a lot because like when I started doing that that's when I started looking at aesthetics and started realizing there's so many different ways of expressing oneself and expressing one's style and it, it really doesn't have to be like the most popular kids or whatever it could literally be 
whatever you want and I feel like I've been really educated and blessed because now I feel like I have a whole like repertoire of different styles and aesthetics to look at and reference to and learn from and I've been really enjoying myself in fact I feel like I've been I'm like the most relaxed about fashion and style that I've ever been in so long because of all the choices and and enjoying all the differences and realizing whatever my style is it, it doesn't have to be the same or perfect every single day it really can just be literally whatever I want it to be and that's been nice Okay, um, correct information. Yes, so I think this is a big thing and I think I've talked about it with a, a lot of you guys. Um, I really feel like it's so important to research and educate oneself and be informed and not be afraid to be wrong and not be afraid to correct oneself just so as you are willing to go the extra mile and, you know, find out more information and keep learning and never stop learning you know I feel it's so important because like nowadays a lot of, a lot of sources tend to not be accurate a lot of sources tend to um, have all uh, ulterior motives and gen um, agendas and it's it's important to be able to see through whatever is reporting and sometimes the ulterior motives is not that bad you know um, but sometimes it could actually lead to incorrect information being spread and um, that's not good. So for me, I personally feel like this year I really want to make sure that um, I check as much as possible and that's why for quite a few of these videos, uh, these art streams, I've been sharing information about the mushroom and we've been discussing a lot of things that has to do with like properties about the mushroom and you know what makes a mushroom special and what makes a mushroom safe to touch and safe to eat and for this mushroom there's not a lot <laughs> you can do with this mushroom this mushroom is tiny and not heavily studied so I hope that like I'll take that information I've learned from researching um, this and I will carry it over I mean that, that those habits from researching these mushrooms and I'll carry it over to all the other work that I do so I think also my editing style for my videos is going to change a lot this year. I want to really like sit down and look at my videos and feel like, oh, okay, maybe I want to say this, maybe I don't want to say that. And I hope that it will improve the, the overall message of the videos that I create. And I hope that people will enjoy watching my videos more as well. Okay. So, next is comply with the law, observe manners. Yes, which I think is very, very important. I think that um, I've never really had a reason to do anything that's like not law-abiding, but um, I do feel like in the past when I was younger, I would feel slightly more inclined to be a bit more reckless. And I sometimes felt like, oh, am I now boring because I don't want to do like going late at night and eating ice cream in the middle of the night and taking long walks like have I become like such an old lady but with the way things have gone and I, I kind of feel like yeah I think it's better to just stay inside it's better to just because by by doing simple acts of just like you know staying inside and observing safe distancing and good uh, and being responsible basically being a responsible world citizen you know and leading a, like a responsible life I feel like um, I I I can encourage others to do the same, and I can feel proud that you know, okay, I haven't contributed to any anything negative, at least in my daily habits, my daily routine, and yeah, it gives me some some motivation to keep going, even though like this is definitely not the most wonderful <laughs> state of affairs right now. Hello, hi Charming. Hello. So, um, yeah, I'm just talking about like New Year's resolutions and um, the sustainable otaku goals. So, I was talking about number 11, um, complying with the law and observing manners. 
and um, I'm I'm basically just gonna go through all 17 uh, but yeah if you like to share with me some of your New Year's resolutions that would be great because um, I actually had a really good video session yesterday and it really got me thinking like okay how do I want to edit these how this year is different you know so I want to do things a little bit different and I want to motivate myself a little bit more to you know maybe get, make my editing skills better or whatever and so I was thinking also beyond just that like as a person as a creator how do I want to even create better environments for myself and so that's kind of what I'm doing here because I started so late <laughs> I started at 11 and I actually have to go in 10 minutes so I really wanted to just do like a just chatting video and like just talk really without like the expectation of finishing this piece because it is not going to get done in 10 minutes so yeah like what are your new year's resolutions for this year what are you doing to like set yourself on the right path so that you can achieve all you want to be and and other and other things. <gasps> um, okay, so on to number 12 is take care of belongings. And I think this is one of the biggest reasons why, okay, I was late. And so I actually changed my keyboard out to this new keyboard because my older keyboard is, well, it's not really mine, it's my, my girlfriend's and it's a bit spoilt. And so I didn't want to keep using it because I think we should fix it. And sometimes I feel like it's easy to just keep using that one spot item until it just breaks. But what if I can do something? What if I can fix it? If I can fix it, then that means I'm not going to waste, you know, money and time to go and get a replacement for something that, you know, can actually be fixed. And then, you know, I, I feel like as a consumer, I want to stop overbuying things. I want to stop over shopping so that, you know, I can just reduce some of the waste. So that's again about like, um, like complying with the law and, and also like, I guess, appropriate contribution or appropriate spending. I just want to be mindful about things like that. Charming says, I think my New Year's resolution is probably to make a lot more content and maybe try making new friends. Also, the keyboard looks nice. Yeah, thank you. Again, it's Bud's. Um, yeah. Bud loves the color red. So a lot of stuff we have is actually red because of her. Um, oh, yeah. What's your favorite color? My favorite color, I think, would be... Because I could say pink, but it's not just pink. My favorite color is like a salmon, a salmon pink. Like I, I, I think it, you can kind of see it in like a lot of my selection of everything. I really like this kind of salmony pink. Reminds me of sushi, which I also love. Um, so yeah, uh, back to what you mentioned. Yeah, I, I think you should, and I definitely think that's in my my list of things to do this year making more content and i really would like to see more of it on vine and also in discord when i finally get around to doing it i'm so sorry also um yeah do make new friends i i i, I think that was yeah good relationships number eight yes that is definitely one of the sustainable otaku goals as well um and I feel like I want to have healthy relationships with my friends. In the past, I think a lot of us, like a lot of the people I would interact with, we all kind of had weight issues. And so I think we brought each other down a lot. And I've kind of decided to just step away from people who would make me feel bad for eating and for living a certain way because it's not easy, you know, to just lose weight it, it, it doesn't happen overnight and so if like I feel my friends are giving me bad advice I feel like there's nothing wrong with them but I just feel like it's affecting me mentally so I think I've decided to also like make sure that okay um I have I have I don't know how to explain it but like I, I surround myself with people who 
won't bring me down and make me feel fat and won't like nitpick at me and like ask why aren't you exercising five times a week because that's what you said you were going to do um you know and, and just take it slow so i i think in the past i was always just so afraid like to be alone and like have people who uh, were just kind of mean <laughs> just because like i was like um i i want friends but like this year i'm kind of thinking like nah i i after like meeting people like you and like talking to other people online i kind of feel like oh i wish every interaction was like this like i i go away from talking to someone or from spending time with someone and i don't feel dysphoria i don't feel really really negative so i i i think like yeah for me this year i want to like focus on like good relationships and positive things and and making sure like whenever i i i meet up with someone it's it's not just because like um i'm lonely but it's because i genuinely want to be with that person and i think interestingly enough like being online and streaming it really makes me realize oh so this is what it feels like to want to genuinely just turn up you know and not just like oh i feel guilty because like um i haven't seen this person forever or something like that i i don't want to do that anymore <laughs> sorry that's just my issues <laughs> um okay so your favorite color is light orange oh okay i i like light orange too i mean i guess it's kind of close to salmon pink um let me think of things that are light orange things that are light orange are i would say the inside of a mandarin fruit that's kind of light orange because the no 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 i guess it would be a darker orange what things are light orange hmm. goldfish right and i love goldfish i absolutely adore goldfish ah uh, goldfish are my favorite i had a lot of goldfish actually a long time ago but because we move house and our new place doesn't allow us to have pets we had to just um let them go um they're really hard to take care of goldfish they're so hard but they're so pretty and they're so cute just love them um sunflowers and i think clementines but sunflowers are like warm yellow i love sunflowers they're my favorite flower um they're the sunflowers are like a, a warmish yellow but i guess like as you go deeper into the center towards like the seeds area it does get a bit of a light orange I, but i think definitely clementines clementines are definitely light orange yeah that's actually quite an interesting shade let me see as we get closer to 11 30 i'm i'm gonna just abandon ship when it comes to the art piece um let's see light orange things that are light orange so let's look at some <laughs> i'm so sorry i'm over analyzing this but like let's look at some shades of orange Oh, I love looking at palettes. Ooh, 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 ooh. Autumn. Do you like autumn? Oh my gosh. I think autumn has a lot of light orange, like the the crisp, faded tones of like dried leaves, or the 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 soft, the soft glow of young pumpkins, um, as you know, summer turns to fall. I think those are in my head what light orange is like. Um, or like the first bloom of. Oh, oh, I've been obsessed over um, candles. Let me see. I think there's a candle here. No, where did it go? Oh my goodness, and there goes my timer. Oh. Uh, no yes yes look at that how cute is this 
yeah i enjoy autumn it's love it's very lovely yes you see so like this is kind of like why why i was like kind of over analyzing a little bit because like i find like color sort of really reflects your nature and who you are and like warm yes the candle is adorable yes and warm warm tones always make me like really happy and like evoke like certain seasons and certain uh, feelings let me just pull up some pinterest images of autumn autumn yeah my older sister is obsessed over like trying to find certain aesthetics and looks because she always wants to like buy me stuff because we live in different countries and so she wants to have like an idea of like what i am mentally in pinterest form so that she can like fine tune um the gifts which is so cute so it's really made me think about like palettes and how it affects the skin how it affects the mood and um i also find that i fall into like this category of like wanting to have yes there we go this the sweet light pumpkin the gl warm glow of the candles yeah all of the stuff and I, I think another thing that I've been trying to do this year is to try to get things around me in my environment that also create like a reflection of who I am. So like, as I said, I like salmon pink. So when I was buying my new sippy cup, I tried to make sure that I got a similar shade to what I like, just to also make sure that in my environment around me, everything sort of like gels into this warm, fuzzy ball of happiness. And I also am more inclined to like drink more water because I'm more likely to reach for this than I am to reach for this. This is the blue, which is kind of cool and not really my thing. And then this is the pink. So I'll most likely drink more water. And it's true. I've tricked myself into drinking like two cups so far. And it's only like 11 a.m. in the morning for me. So <laughs> I think that sort of um psyche has been helping me as well to improve and make sure that i can be number one no health no life so make sure that i'm healthy and also do things like self-love like take a bath because now i have soaps which are like beautiful and soft tones and they smell great okay um you said warmer colors in general are very lovely yes they are they're cozy and warm and just inspire this sense of like peace and calmingness and tranquility okay i i do uh, i have to go i i already filmed the video for you for princess core so i'm really excited and which is also why i must run away now because i'm gonna go and edit it um, I'm going to quickly read the last few. Um, number 13 is not only consume but also provide. So I guess maybe that's also what I'm doing by creating these videos and this content. I'm like creating my stuff but I'm also, you know, uh, no, no, sorry. I'm, I'm consuming a lot of TikTok but I'm also like creating things from whatever it is that I'm consuming. Um, number 14 is claim view, calm view to self and others. Yeah, so I think that's also why I like analyzing what colors I like, you know, finding out what colors my friends like, like you like light orange and my girlfriend likes uh, red, fiery red, <laughs> means that like when I do things or I give things, it's a little bit more personalized because I know something about you. Um, number 15 is nurture the next generation. So, okay, that I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I suppose, like, um, maybe that's why I also like to create videos because it's something for me to leave behind. I can't say my advice is great, but I can say that I'm doing something. <laughs> Number 16 is courage to change and courage to rest. Yeah, so I think I did this when I took my little vacation and coming back i feel so much rested and so much more confident because i feel like i'm no longer second guessing myself as i actually spent time to sit down and write out what i want 2022 to be like um and then prepare for the unexpected so that little bit i'm not sure about but i suppose yeah 2021 2020 and 2019 has all been very unexpected but um with 
survived you know we're here talking about warm tones and like new year's resolutions so if we can get through all that we can get through the rest whatever 2022 has to bring so yeah my resolutions for this year is to be more present to pr- to produce more content um to be more self-aware about who i interact with and um how their energy is affecting me and also aim to be somebody who gives out positive energy and who um stands for the right things uh and doesn't allow like negative influences to get me down or to pass it on i'm trying so hard to like avoid that so that i i hope that whoever like interacts with me their takeaway is like positive and like a bit refreshed as well because i think this world is so exhausting and i don't want to put anything else out there that's gonna like drive people down so that's the person i want to be so i guess we can like revisit all of this (laughs) in 2023 (laughs) hopefully same time as well same time same day if i can remember you can help me by reminding me today is the 6th of jan So next year, we'll see how far I got and whether I kind of stuck to my guns and created as much content positive-wise as possible. (sighs) Okay. So um, before I go, I'd like to find out, like, um, what are your plans for today? Um, I'm so sorry the stream was so short, but, like, yeah, I I really want to, like, finish editing the Princess Core video, the Art Core video, and the other two videos which i'm not going to tell you so that it's not you you don't know everything that you actually get a little bit of a surprise (laughs) because i do notice that on this on the stream i'm so comfortable i'm like i'm gonna list out all the things that i'm gonna do and i'm like okay maybe i should i should like keep some stuff secret so that like you have something to look forward to (sighs) i think i might just add like I think a few highlights and then I'm going to close this as well I think right here at the top here as well I don't know if my palm is pressing too hard um Charming says, I'm probably going to finish some more drawings and maybe finish an animation I'm making. (gasps) I want to see. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, this is great. We're both starting with our resolutions intact and full speed ahead. And yeah, I'm really proud of you. I can't wait to see it. Are you going to post it on Instagram? I hope you do. I think it's done. No pressure if you're not going to. But yeah, can't wait. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The light was from here hitting this area, and then it'll be hitting this rock here about this angle. Just put that there. Then the next time when I finally properly finish it, it should be, yeah, depth. Um, Charming says I'll post it on Instagram when it's finished. Yes. Something for me to look forward to. <laughs> Ah, I'm so happy. I'm always really happy when I see your posts, when I see my older sister's posts, and when I see Bad's posts because I'm really keen on like you guys. Um, I I don't think Bad posts a lot of art anymore, but she does post like her live streams and stuff, so that's fun. Um, yeah, I really look forward to like seeing your posts every day. I'm sorry if I don't get to it though, because like, gosh, so, uh, like the rest of the day I'll be editing, so the only time I open Instagram is gonna be like um in the evening. <laughs> so sad but then i'll just spam like you <laughs> so it might be your morning i think that's what usually will happen anyway i'll be looking out for it um as always thank you so much for being here charming um and to those that will see this video later on youtube thank you for watching um i think 
yes, I will be streaming again tomorrow for sure. But I will be streaming on time and it won't be this messed up setup because um, I'll just be doing the painting and I'll be finishing the painting. So if you want to come and see me actually finish this piece, um, please stop by tomorrow. And as always, may your days be magical. I will see you in the next time. Bye-bye. Ah, oh, and I can't wait to see the animation. Ah, I love I love little indie animations and stuff. Okay, bye. Um, today I'm doing a dance. I have put I have put a new a new song um to play on the corner there. So I hope you enjoy it. Um. Yeah, I guess today is just a really. I'm exhausted. I've been having a toothache all day, so. I'm not actually even expecting anyone to come in. I guess maybe just charming who she does. And. I'm actually thinking, like, most likely I'm not gonna even upload these to YouTube. Like, kind of just like drawing with charming. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is just gonna be like a really chill stream. Mm. Yeah, the one there's nobody here, so I think I'm just going to stop. Probably should um silence my phone. Okay, let's begin. I should just put my phone up somewhere <laughs> entirely just if the charming comes in <laughs> because sometimes I can be a bit blur and then I don't see all oh, that I'm seeing is there okay so the chat is over here in the corner So this is just a really chill drawing stream. I'm not going to be talking much because my tooth really hurts. I'm really just going to be drawing. So if you're here and you're lurking, it's fine. Um, if you want to see something in chat, I'll try to see it down here. <laughs> but yeah, um, let me just get started. So this piece, I'm intending to just kind of finish it and then move on to a new piece that I've started. Hey, A W S H C three. How should I pronounce that? Ouch, ouch, ouch. Z three. I'm good. How are you today? I'm working on this piece that I started weeks ago. Uh, it's a Mycenae. Um, what was it called? Mycenae. Hey. Oh goodness. Let me just pull up my little notion bar here, which. Mm. My senior hematopus, yes. Um, owls. Owls! Oh, okay, it's like that. Owls. Okay, hi, it's nice to meet you, Owls. Um, how are you today? <laughs> I am basically just going to be drawing and finishing this piece up, and I'm going to be working on another piece soon. It's going to be different from this one. This one's more painterly. The other one is going to be um, more illustrative. Fine, and you? I'm doing okay. 
<laughs> aside from the fact that I kind of have like a toothache so usually I'll like ramble on quite a bit but today I don't really feel like it so I just decided okay I'm just gonna do like a really quiet stream <laughs> do you do you stream do you draw um, I like meeting other artists No, I do not stream and I do not draw. <laughs> Were you drawn by my pretty mushrooms? <laughs> um, then what are you up to? Oh, and where are you from? Is it late where you are or is it like um, early? Because where I am, I'm in Singapore. So it is uh, 10 a.m. right now. So it's quite early in the morning for me. Mm. And I like to get up early and do work. It motivates me for like the rest of the day. Mm. I do not draw, but my mom is an art teacher. Ah, <gasps> that's awesome! I used to teach art, um, but then I decided um, I want to try to like focus on my on my art as a like artist artist. So I stopped teaching and but I miss it you know I miss like the interaction with like the students the kids and everything ah, art teaching is awesome I, I hope your mom is doing well um like d do you f do you sometimes ask her to draw I, I know my little sister used to always ask me like um can you draw this or can you draw that for me do you do the same with your mom <laughs> how does your mom react does she like to draw stuff for you? I, I quite like to, to do stuff with my sister. Um, Al says, I am from Syria, but I live in Brazil and it's 11.18. 11.18am or p.m.? Syria. Oof. I feel so ignorant. Give me a second. Wait. Where is Syria? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Let me Google this. Uh, I know where Brazil is. Um, Syria, a country in Western Asia, it borders the Mediterranean Sea, the West, Turkey to North, and Iraq to the East and Southeast. Jordan to Oh, so it's like it's in the. Uh, so you say, yeah, I always do that with here. Well, oh, PM, PM, okay. Oh, <laughs> it's quite late. I'm so sorry. I hope I'm not keeping you up. Um, wow. Honestly, I've not traveled much. Um, so it's so cool to meet people from different parts of the world. Um, it borders the mid have you been have you been um uh back to syria because like for me um i'm from africa i'm from uganda but i was born in asia i was born in singapore so i've only been back to my birth country like twice in my life and both time was when um i was really small like the last time was when i was seven so I have some memories of it, but not a lot. Uh, and then, yeah, I've, I've basically been in Asia for so long. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I've always wanted to be, oh, and I've always wanted to visit Brazil. Brazil always seems so exotic. What is it like living in Brazil? Hi, Vatimun. Hey. Um, I hope that you're having a great day at work. It's okay if you can't stay, I know you're quite busy. 
Okay, I should also focus on the fact that I need to finish this illustration. I've been working on this painting for like, oh my goodness, way too long. It needs to finally be done. <laughs> Alice says, I came to Brazil four months ago. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you've been living in Syria and now you've moved to Brazil. Oh, that's nice. But it says, I'll be lurking. Thank you. Wow. Okay, then please, what is Syria like? Is it like an arid country? Is it a uh, like desert country? Is it lush? I know there's like a lot of issues in that area but like I don't actually know anything about Syria because like everything on the news is always about like the bad stuff the negative stuff and um, I think it's also like a lot of like the American perspective of what the Middle East is like so like I'm very interested to know like what is Syria like like for real Because like I I know this it's very unfortunate like what's happening um, in that area. Mm. Or at least I'm um, not really sure. Cause yeah I I don't have I think here in Asia we don't have a lot of people who are from the Middle East. Like, it's mostly just a lot of um, if people do travel, it's usually a lot of like um, Caucasians that come in. So I've had like Caucasian friends and like African friends. So I feel kind of like, oh yeah, I know a lot about like France and Britain and all those places. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry if I'm asking you too many questions. <laughs> uh, okay, so you say, yeah, long story short, it's very rich in history. Oh, that's lovely. That's beautiful. But it has been in war for 12 years now. <sighs> yeah. I can relate a little bit because like my family literally had to flee from Uganda. Like my parents. Uh, during civil unrest. And like that area where we used to, where they used to stay. My, my my family literally went through well my parents were almost killed because like my mom said bombs fell on her house and they had to like hide in their bed and like there's this one time when my dad was even like chased by soldiers so like I really on one hand I I feel like my history is just riddled with like war stories and I I just, I just, I don't know, I wish for a reality where, like, uh, where it, we, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful that my parents, like, literally saved us, us girls, me and my sibling, my sisters, and gave us a better life, and I, I, like, never, never for one second, like, take it for granted, um, so I'm glad that, I'm glad that you're, I hope you're you're safe. I hope that you have all of your family with you. I'm so sorry for any loss that you've suffered. Um, I'm I'm so sorry. I'm, I I also hear that Brazil is also not in the best place either. But I'm glad that at least like you and your family are hopefully in a better area. <laughs> I'm so sorry, just asking all these questions, but like ah. Uh, I think one of the biggest things for me is where I live. Not a lot of people, second or third generation, have 
the pain of like living with parents who went through a war, you know, and so you it really it really gets my heart whenever I hear people who have like similar or like have like family members who've gone through like actual war and have survived, and I'm just like, yeah, we gotta be fighters. We gotta keep moving forward, no matter like what, because like our parents work so hard for us. You know what I mean? <sighs> Thank you for saying that. My parents chose the right decision. Yeah. <sighs> uh. Thank God it's settled now. <sighs> yeah, I think what where I come from, things are still quite pretty rough, but like at least. For my family's sake, we're not there, <laughs> and I'm glad that, like, for your family's sake, you you guys have decided to maybe move. Is was moving because of like the aftermath of like issues, or was it because like your mom found a job in Brazil and you guys are settling there now? So I'm looking up and I'm looking down because I put chat down here. <sighs> Like, I think the scariest war story that my, my dad told me was, like, this one time um, my my parents were living in this area where my dad had just gotten a job as an, engine, as an electrician, and he was, like, quite young, and he was trying to get home to my mom, and these soldiers just drove out of nowhere, and they told him to, like, take off his shoes and run, and so... My dad didn't just take off his shoes. He took off his shoes. He dropped his suitcase, his, his briefcase, and he ran and shot to a fire in the background. Just like, <laughs> like, just the thought, like, I probably wouldn't have been born if my dad didn't, like, literally run home. And, like, that night, he said, like, he took my mom and all this stuff and they just left they just were like okay that's it <laughs> this is it <laughs> this is the breaking point and ah. <laughs> so like i have like literally no friends who like i've ever shared that with because i i feel like a lot of my friends wouldn't be able to relate so um yeah Okay, so you say, I'm with my dad now, my mom is still in Syria teaching, okay. Aww, uh, it must be hard to be apart from her. Aww, uh, that's, that's painful. But I'm glad at least you're with your dad. I'm glad at least you're with one of your parents. I, again, I absolutely can relate. Like, for a lot of my childhood, my dad was always, like, either traveling or he was... Because, like, whew, as I said, they left... <laughs> from trying to escape war and then like even after my my siblings and I were born they were still trying to like figure out where to live and where to like place us and all this shit and ah uh, but at least like having my mom there like one parent even when like both parents had to leave for a while like they wouldn't leave for too long they would just like okay put us in somebody's care and then like Oh gosh, <laughs> it's evoking so many sad memories. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is supposed to be a chill stream, but anyway, yeah. I, at least you have one one parent, and I hope that you know things will get better. So you say your mom lives in the capital, Damascus, and it's very safe. Ah, oh. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. I'm so glad. I'm glad that it's safe. I'm glad that she's safe. Good. 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 Mm. <sighs> yeah. Well, um, okay. Let's let's talk about more positive things. <laughs> uh, um. So it's 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 eleven. So are you like up like doing your homework? Are you studying? Uh, are you watching a show and you just decide to pop on Twitch? What are you up to? Okay, okay, yeah. I don't want to start crying on stream. <laughs> Whenever I think of some of the sad things, I'm like, uh. <laughs> okay. 
think I want to add a bit of like light to color tones. I came to Brazil to study, just chilling now. Okay, that's great. That's great. That's great. Um, what are you studying? I am currently trying to study mycology mushrooms, but it's all self-study because like I don't think there's a lot of like schools that offer it and like if I want to take um, one of those online courses, a lot of it just requires you to have like some basic knowledge of like what mushrooms are and whatever because most of it goes into like um, actually how to use mushrooms so i'm just like doing very casual studying of like what does a mushroom look like how to recognize different types of mushrooms yeah <laughs> though on the stream like i won't be doing too many mushrooms just in case like people are gonna get really bored of me just doing mushrooms forever so i'm gonna like change up sometimes mushrooms sometimes other things You're in 11th grade. Oh no, what? How? What grade do you do? What do you do? Something? Oh, because I'm in Asia, I don't really know, like, by grade. Uh, 11th grade is. Oh my goodness, my, my, my Google is like. Does that mean you're going to go to college soon? Is that what it means? Um, okay, so you're in high school. Hi, stupidly charming. Hello. Um, you want to study civil architecture? That is hard, isn't it? It's really hard. I remember like, uh, I don't know if you've heard of like the YouTubers, um, Good Mythical Morning, but I think one of them was a civil, oh, maybe it was a civil engineer. I'm not so sure. Um, charming today, I intend to finish this. In fact, it's almost finished. I'm just trying to educate myself about what civil, architecture is <laughs> um okay civil architecture is a cultural practice preoccupied with the making of buildings and books about them the work of a civil as what it means to produce architecture in a decidedly uncivil time presenting a new civic character for global conditions <gasps> wow that is so interesting I think I've never heard of civil architecture before. The cultural practice. Wow, that's very specific. When I was like thinking of what kind of artist I wanted to be, I never really thought like I want to be like this specific artist. And that also kind of messed me up because later on I, I found out I wanted to be like um, an illustrator. And so I wish I had done this kind of like research when I was like, younger what what made you want to choose civil architecture because it's very obscure it's actually very um specific it's not like oh architecture is a broad thing mm. uh yeah <laughs> Okay, oh, hi. They, are, they were engineers. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Because I remember, like, um, was it, was it Link? Link was sharing, like, how the two of them were working at different companies, but at the same time, um, and then they kind of decided, you know what, they're both really unhappy. And, oh, oh, thank you so much. Thank you for following. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yay, now you get to know when I do my next stream. Yay, yay. I actually don't really have anything to do for people who follow. Should I do something? Hmm. Maybe I should do something. Um, I'm not sure. Um, thank you for following. 
Thank you for following. Thank you for following. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> a little, a little dance. Um, yeah. So they they actually said that they stopped doing their civil engineering uh, because they were unhappy, and then their whole YouTube channel started to employ all of their skill sets, and I think that's what made them so good at their YouTube career because of the education that they got. So I feel like no matter what it is, even if later on it doesn't play out the way uh, you think it will, it's always so good to pursue whatever it is that inspires you when you're young. And no matter what, you know, fate changes, that knowledge will always like stay and be important in your life. Yeah. So I, I hope that you I hope that you get it. I hope that you, you, you keep pushing forward and you become a civil architect. That is so freaking cool. <laughs> um but I'm gonna ask when you say haha thanks. You're welcome. And um is is that this is Halloween song? Mm, I'm not sure. Okay, let me just move wait, 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 wait. let me move chat up. Wait, ah you can't see it anymore. Um this chat. Okay, oh. Wee I'm gonna push you over here. So I created a new little I'm not sure if you can see the chat, sorry. But I created like a new little um radio. Uh, the music now playing is Spanish Moss, Charlie, where is it, let me see the quick time, uh, oh no, Chris Hagen, that's the music playing at the moment, no, you're a follower song, <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so right, um, but I've actually forgotten what I sang already, what did I sing? Um, this is Halloween. This is Halloween. Thank you for the father. Thank you for the <laughs> Okay, now I can remember it. So it's like, this is Halloween. This is Halloween. Thank you for the father. Thank you for the father. <laughs> Next time, uh, remind me again. <laughs> Thank you for following. Okay. Thank you for following. Thank you for following. <laughs> Oh, it makes sense I would use that song. It's one of my favorite shows. Last year we didn't get to watch it. God, how- <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna do it again if it's, if it's too embarrassing. I'm so sorry. A lot of things like- I, I basically have been just following on the tail curtains of Butter Moon, who is like, she's a streamer. She streams uh, FNAF and she's my girlfriend. So she has like a lot more confidence and like structure for her streams. So for me, I mainly just do art and I just ask her to play games for me so <laughs> i haven't really like planned a lot of things i'm just kind of hoping like um at some point i will like eh, though, um figure shit out <laughs> so yay now we have a very embarrassing follower song that is cursed and anyone who follows me is going to have to experience it i am so sorry <laughs> Uh, oh, right, thank you. I am so sorry I did not do that. I'm actually not sure if I have any commands. So now I know I have a SO command. Yes. Okay. When I was growing up, one of the big things I remember the most was my mom was like, You have to be a doctor. You have to be a doctor. And the whole entire childhood of my existence, I was just like, I will eventually tell them that I will be an artist. Not sure when. It may never happen. <laughs> I'm really grateful that my dad was quite supportive and he helped me go to art school and stuff. 
But my mom every now and again occasionally like says, mm, you know you're so good with kids. You should have been a, a doctor. A doctor with children. I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine if I was like a doctor and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you your prescription. Here it is. And thank you for the <laughs> thank you for coming in today. Thank you for coming in today. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll scare kids and parents away. I'm way too lame to be like serious and like do serious stuff like medicine. Um, I said, but I like the mushroom though. Hmm? Why is the mushroom going somewhere? I'm I'm not following. Yeah. Oh, do you see? Ah, I don't know how, but I feel like I, I really need to like find a way. If I could just get it to be like this. The lighting is so nice here, but I have to like draw like this <laughs> in this weird angle. Hmm. I'm going to have to like reevaluate the way like my the light is in this area that I'm drawing. Then you can see clearly. Okay, um, Vladimir says, uh, comments, and then Stupid Chami says, I saw Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan for the first time today. They are, they were a lot different than I thought they would be. Oh, okay, so, you saw Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan. I'm guessing you saw the Disney versions. I really like the Disney version of Alice in Wonderland because I love the illustrations of, like, the flowers. The talking flowers and um the kitty what's the kitty called but anyway i i do know that there is the movie versions of alice in wonderland and those are all peculiar i kind of feel like when disney created alice in wonderland they really um focus on like the childlike aspects of the of the book and they left out quite a few details because I think they were really focusing on like Alice's linear adventure, not all the other nuances and like the Oh my my thing and, and the other messages that you can find in the story. So if you're comparing it to the story, I think um Lewis Carroll had a lot of secrets and small things that he kind of wanted the reader to sort of uh, gather like from implica implied messages um, so I, I feel like they really try to just leave a lot more of the focus on like just a linear story of like Alice's exploration and stuff like that um, uh, Charming says the talking flowers were my favorite part I know right the way they were dancing their expressiveness ah oh, I love I love Disney um, cartoons and Disney movies because the older ones were all painterly and artistic and um, there was so much of the old style layering of like um, the different screens like I, I don't know not a lot of people have done this but um they have some documentaries where they show how they made the animations so it's literally like you know they would have like paper like this is the background and then this is the foreground you know and they will actually like move things like this so the background is actually stationary and it's kind of like so with that in mind you can really see like how animation has transformed and even like the look and feel and the effects of all the different characters changes and, and has like a more dreamy nostalgic effect when you watch the old Disney movies. Nowadays everything is 3D and CG and for me I it's not as artistic basically. So that's why I think the flowers were so beautiful because they really painted realistic or like um sort of impressionistic style illustrations and then on top of that they have like the the more simplified illustration which was moving and it's so pretty and lovely and magical i don't get that anymore which is okay the newer ones uh they have their own uniqueness and their own charm okay i'm so sorry <laughs> oh, says how often do you stream okay so i stream every day 
for five days a week, Mondays to Fridays at 10 to 11. Oh, this is always the part that gets my heart. I have 15 minutes left. So um, yeah, if you come back tomorrow, I'll be streaming at 10 a.m. again. Um, yeah. And you know what, I think I'll just try to make it a point to figure out how to make the lighting look a bit better because it looks so different when I try to do it here. And I say it looks even more different in person. It actually looks a lot muted. The camera makes it look very overexposed. I'm, I'm kind of thinking I may just never finish this painting on, on screen. I might have to just do this later at night and just complete it because I really want to like layer it a bit more and create some like actual lighting color gradient. Okay, um, but it says you should put on a schedule. I think I have. I'll go check. I think I have a schedule up, but I'm not quite sure. Um, occasionally. I do want to stream on like a Saturday or a Sunday but I'm often also trying to film videos for my main channel so uh, weekends are the hardest because there's so many things I want to get done on a weekend but yeah I will definitely create a schedule for Monday to Friday same time and yeah it will mostly be um, painting You will see me tomorrow. Ah, oh, thank you. That's so delightful. I'm so happy. <sighs> Actually, today, um, I don't know if I mentioned this uh, to Charming and Bud, but my, my tooth really hurts. So I wasn't really intending to be very chatty, but it's so nice that all of you have come in. I actually barely even noticed the pain anymore. It's been so lovely. Ah. <sighs> Uh, it says, oh yeah, you have a schedule, but they all reflect different times. Oh, really? Oh, that's strange. Okay, I'll check it. I'll look into it. Um, oh, it says, but until then, I need to sleep. <gasps> yes, of course, because it's 11. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, Um, please uh, have a good rest. Thank you so much for dropping by. Um, you definitely don't have to stay too long, especially since it's 11 where you were at 10. It was 10 p it was 11 p.m. at 10. So that means it's around midnight now. Okay, yes, please go and sleep. Please go and sleep. You need to rest well so that you can become a civil architect. Yes, that is so cool. I'm rooting for you. <sighs> to be really young but to have big dreams is amazing. I, I hope that everybody, like young and vibrant, dreams big and aims high so that they can achieve what they want in this lifetime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I used to be a teacher, so I I feel like sometimes I, I can get a little bit sidetracked with my trying to be motivational. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> I really feel like I want everybody to like strive and feel happy, especially like with things sometimes getting so dark and depressing. I feel like a little bit of love and a little bit of hope is what the world needs. Let's see, and I kind of think I'm I'm pretty much done. I think if I en work this painting anymore, I'm going to lose it. So I'm just going to create some um, echoes of like shadow yeah. so echo colors that's okay bye ah so nice to meet you can't wait to see you tomorrow Okay, so on the topic of Peter Pan, going back to what um, Charming has seen today, 
I think my favorite scene in Peter Pan is the scene where, um, gosh, it's been so long, but I really like the scene of the mermaids. And like right in the beginning, you actually kind of get like the swooping area of, oops, sorry, of the whole island because you fly in. Um, and I feel like those those shots like and also like when Wendy is first introduced to the Lost Boys and they're all like huddled around and like ooh 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 what's going on I really found those scenes very fascinating because you really feel like you're immersed into this strange um, jungle scape and it really draws you in so beautifully so I really like those parts of Peter Pan what about um i don't know if you're still here charming but if you are what about alice in wonderland and peter pan were surprising for you because you say it's so much more different than what you expected it to be so what were you expecting versus what you what you experienced On my side, just letting you guys know, I have nine minutes. Time flies when I'm having fun. Oh, so much. Well, um, having said that, I think I might want to just touch on um, my favorite Peter Pan, uh, just in case Charming comes back later. Um, I think my favorite Peter Pan was the one with Robin Williams. That one was so fun. It's so tragic, like, he's not with us anymore, but, like, that Peter Pan left lasting memories on me. I really felt very immersed in like the storytelling aspect of it and I like the fact that because it's a film, a lot of it was props and creative um, items that were clearly handmade and it was just so fun and his interaction with the Lost Boys and everything was so organic. It was really, it really took me away and it became like a constant thing that I would return back to um, during the holidays to re-watch with my family because it's just such a wholesome show. Ah, okay. So you see Charming, for Peter Pan it was that Wendy's brother staying with her and their parents and for Alice in Wonderland it's the house scene where Alice accidentally runs ruins the rabbit's little pink house. Oh, are these, are these the two scenes that you like the most Wendy's brother staying with her Wendy's brother staying with her oh okay you know I never really thought about that it is a bit peculiar that the three children were staying in the in the same room hmm I don't know I suppose maybe in Britain it's it's normal but yeah I suppose like normally each child would get their own room and especially like I'm not sure about other cultures but like usually brothers and sisters wouldn't stay in the same room together sisters and sisters yes but brothers and sisters not really because I mean different needs of different um, different genders and whatnot so perhaps maybe okay what I'm thinking is, for the sake of animation, they put them all in the same room. Because I do remember that in the book, um, 
They all were in different rooms, and Peter Pan was disturbing them in different areas of the house. But yeah, in the animation, for some reason, I really think it's just for storytelling purposes that they condensed it. But when you think about it, it does seem a bit sus. <laughs> then you say, um, uh, for Alice in Wonderland, it's the house scene where Alice accidentally ruins the rabbit's little pink home. Now, that one, I read the book. And I really felt like that one was a tiny bit disappointing for me because there's so much more that actually happens in the house. And so for that, I really think it was just for the sake of storytelling that they condensed the house incident. Uh, and I think it was for amusement purposes because of how silly she looks when she bursts out of the house. In fact, in the book, there's a whole entire scene where, you know, when she's crying, she actually doesn't just get washed out to sea there's a scene where there's like all sorts of different animals that she ends up interacting with and so on and um she even has like an additional story about having to do this game between like a, um, a bird and a mouse and various other creatures so i don't think the disney actually the disney version actually touched on that and I kind of feel like Disney has a habit of like condensing a lot of information in order to just create like a linear story path. So it's okay if you were a bit confused because it made way more sense in the book as not a lot of little information was taken out. So the purpose of each scene was more clear. For the movie, I think they really wanted it to be like very linear. So yeah, I think you're right to say that you're a bit confused. And you say, I was also confused when Wendy said she didn't want a different room. She said that? That's peculiar. Now I need to rewatch it. Now I need to rewatch it. Definitely. It's been a long time. I definitely don't remember any of the lines because I was so focused on like the beauty of like the animation itself. Even as a kid, I never really paid attention to what anyone was saying. <laughs> So I'm gonna go and rewatch it for sure and I'm gonna actually think about I mean pay attention to like what they're saying and how they're interacting with each other. That's a bit sus. Like why wouldn't she want her own room? And and you're saying like she said this when she was with Peter Pan with the Lost Boys? Or was this like when she was going to bed at night? <laughs> oh my gosh. Disney is looking sus. Why is it so sus, Disney? Because, like, some things I can write off as just, like, you know, okay, Disney's trying to just move the story along, so they're trying to just eliminate unnecessary details, but, like, there's no need to specifically say, like, I don't want my own room. I want to stay with all the guys. I, I, I want to be, like, very, very uncomfortably close to every person. Like, even like if it's like a lot of girls, I think everybody would want their own space, right? Like that's that makes sense. <laughs> Charming said she didn't openly say it, but she was against the idea when her dad was scolding her. Okay, so this was in the beginning, before they left. And Okay. Was it about the whole growing up thing? Because I remember there was Nanny the dog and there was a scuffle over whether or not they needed the dog anymore and then there was a scuffle over like... So was it that? Was it like a growing up thing? Maybe she just didn't want to like be apart from her brothers? Was it symbolic? Was she symbolically saying, don't take me away from like the childhood that I used to have. I don't want to grow up. Because like um, Peter Pan was all about like wanting to stay a child forever and not wanting to let go of your childhood. Maybe it's kind of symbolic to the creators of, of the Disney movie to show that um, she so didn't want to grow up that she demanded that she wanted to even stay sleeping in the same room as her brothers simply because she felt more like a kid <gasps> okay tell me this yeah it was about growing up thing in the beginning
I think what's out of character is I feel that um, most girls would really like their own space. I don't really know a lot of girls who wouldn't. And in general, most kids would like their own space, even young, you know. I don't think there's a lot of kids in general who are going to be like, yes, I totally want to stay in the same room with all of my siblings. Like, if, if I could have my own room, like, growing up, I would be so stoked. But I had to stay with all my siblings because we lived in a small, a small um, apartment. And, like, yeah, we didn't have much. So I don't I, I I I kind of feel like maybe it's a cultural thing like maybe um, at the time because like different times different eras um, maybe they had so many rooms and they felt lonely so maybe the idea of being separated was <laughs> was daunting. <sighs> Well, I think I'm definitely going to go and rewatch the show and then I'll have a better idea about like my opinion of that because I, I feel like for me it goes two ways. Either Disney is just being super sus and trying to tell us that boys and girls should always stay in the same room together for the rest of their lives. This should be something we should emulate or that this is how they're trying to symbolically represent that she doesn't want to grow up she doesn't want to let go of anything from her childhood which includes the idea of sharing a room with her brother which doesn't really seem like typical fe like feminine behavior female behavior i don't know i think most girls would like their own space <gasps> and boys too i think most kids most anybody even if you're really young i don't know what what do you think do you, do you think that you would react the same way if you were her age? I mean, she was like, what, seven? I think seven or eight. At seven or eight, I was like, why do I have to share? <laughs> why do I have to still share? the strokes just the flow is it the pressure or is it just that my my apple pen is running out of charming says i probably would have been happy but a little scared to have my own room yeah it's like the like okay well because i stay with my my siblings until the day i moved out of the house i never slept alone at night and until now i kind of have like like a fear of like not having at least a little bit of light in the room so i absolutely can relate to that um <coughs> sorry uh so yeah, I, I do feel like it is it is scary. It is definitely scary to have your own room and especially at night you don't have that. Um, especially when you get so used to it. Like at any point you can just turn around and there's my older sister. Though occasionally she like kicks me because like um, when I sleep at night I kind of like roll around and like move too much and get into her personal space. But at least like there's that, there's that like safety blanket of like, oh, there's always somebody nearby i don't have to be like scared or afraid but like um i kind of feel like once i left uh and i got my own place i i recognize that actually maybe 
partially one of the reasons why I was so scared and afraid and still am is because I never had the opportunity to just have my own space. I was so codependent and still I'm so codependent on someone else being in the room with me that like I cannot like go and stay in a hotel room by myself. I can't travel by myself because of that fear of like, oh my God, I'm going to be alone in a room. So I kind of feel like maybe even if a kid is afraid or even if you're afraid, you should probably still try and see whether or not it's good for you, if it would work for you. And I feel like if if a kid was being actively given the responsibility maybe that would be a good thing because then they won't grow up into me who like can barely stay in a room by herself without getting freaked out you know so the fear is definitely going to be there but like i i feel like trying it's always good to try and i i think typically not everybody grows up with that kind of fear you kind of grow out of it at some point and for me i i did kind of grow out of it once i had like some coping mechanisms like um having a nightlight which i still use <laughs> or like um having somebody on call and stuff like that so like i think it's still good like still experimenting and trying and having the opportunity to live on your own or be on your own for a while if you don't even have the chance then how do you grow out of it, right? So maybe that's what Disney's trying to talk about, like change and what do you think? Um, I have my own room at my mom's house, but it's a little hard for me to sleep because there's a large mirror in the room and I get worried I'll see a ghost in it. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, like for Bud and I, we don't even have like a large mirror in the house, in our room. We have it like next to the door <laughs> because I'm also afraid of the same thing. Um, in fact, like my parent, oh my God, I don't want to, I don't want to freak you out. You literally have this in your room. I'm not going to say anything else. <sighs> well, um, I, I, I think like, yeah, that's. Mm. yeah then oof. so what do you do to to make yourself feel better when you're living alone in your room and does okay so you say at, at your mom's house so are you currently at your mom's house are you in that room what to do I, I think like this though i still want to get a large mirror I, I i haven't been able to see my full outfit for like my whole life i've only been able to see partial outfits because of like that reason of not having a large mirror um you say i'm at my dad's house now i usually try to stay on my phone until i start to fall asleep ah uh, okay 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 yeah i think yes that's exactly it like being on the phone late at night like sometimes when i can't sleep because of like the pain in my tooth i will like go on tiktok or I will like put on lo-fi music. Oh, I think that's it. That's like the, the secret for me. Like I put on familiar shows that I've watched over and over again. Like this is really nice show if you haven't watched it. It's called Corner Gas. It's this show that's based in Canada. Um, this guy works at a gas station. It's very chill. There is no like screaming or shouting. There's no big things that happen. It's like really, really chill. And so my girlfriend plays that on a loop for me. She downloaded like all the seasons and she just plays it in the background. So the whole night we have like the low hum of like the sitcom in the background. And if not, I'll play some lo-fi music. I try to like not do it from YouTube because in the middle of the night, so for some reason, for some reason at two to three, YouTube decides this is the time to play metal. Like, not any metal. Like, 
death rock metal like the kind of metal that is just like all your neighbors and your friends are gonna come from all the corners of the room and just go like please shut that off <laughs> so um i would suggest like spotify but if not i would even suggest like um just compiling music or something and like i don't even mind giving you this compilation of music that i have that i made it's one hour i could totally like drop it in discord when i finally set that up and you can just have that playing in the background because i've had to like create all sorts of all sorts of things just to cope with like sleeping at night sleeping in a darkened room and i feel like some of these things work so I hope like some of that those ideas could help you too because it's I think I was like kind of insomniac for a while because I couldn't sleep and I was like so freaked out on my own especially like before Bud moved in so I had to find different ways to cope with sleeping on my own and those are the ones that worked um what else worked I think for a while listening to podcasts also worked especially like ones that are funny or ones that are like the bbc ones where they talk about like stories or audiobooks like i think you can get audiobooks from the library i'm not sure if in america they have that but here in singapore you can download audiobooks and i'll always choose an audiobook which has a lot of words like an encyclopedia or like a very old classical story and I'll just have that on the background because I know I'm not gonna pay attention it's so boring I'm gonna fall asleep pick engineering books oh they're the best I don't understand a single thing and it doesn't matter because it's just some old guy droning on in fact I can even picture I'm in class and like my physics teacher is just trying to tell me like the axis and the y and the, and the y. okay 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 I'm just gonna say. <laughs> oh but this is love love and I love you oh which also means I have to go I love you too bad <sighs> okay so um I I hope that you get a good rest tonight charming um and I don't know what to do about large mirrors in a room I personally have literally moved them out of the room I'm just like uh uh um yeah but I'll, I'll look at it I'll look at um I'll look on YouTube I'll try and figure it out because the thing is I'm also in the same conundrum I want to buy a large mirror I would really love to see my full outfit but the fear is holding me back so now I think if this is gonna motivate me I'm gonna figure out how do you place a large mirror in a room in such a way that it doesn't scare me because I've read a lot of folklores and we all know that mirrors are basically portals so yeah I'm not even gonna mince words you know I don't want to have a large mirror somewhere where late at night I could sleepwalk in or out of something so um, yeah I'll look into that as well for you along with like probably upgrading this app oh my goodness I still can't seem to use it properly <sighs> I want to create a few more like highlights and I just can't seem to do it. I think maybe I need to wait for the paint to dry. But you know what? Never mind. I'm just gonna call this this is it. This is the end. I finally finished something on stream. That's it. <laughs> it looks kinda terrible on the video, but um I think when I save it I'm going to show it to you on my YouTube channel and on Instagram and you'll see that it kinda isn't as oversaturated as it looks. Okay, so Chami says thank you for the advice. Have a good day. You too. Have a great evening. I hope that, you know, you get to go to sleep nicely and well. And I hope you watch something really nice or listen to something really nice to help you fall asleep later. Okay. And then as always, oh, you know, I remember we are supposed to raid or raiding is a thing that we could do. Is that a thing? I don't know. <laughs> um, I think it's a thing. Let me look at like 
is there any channel that I follow that is online now? No, I don't really think so. But yeah, okay, next time if this because the Nucleaniums don't stream this early in the morning, but if anyone ever did, do let me know if you have any suggestions about who I should raid. Let me know. I think you can even... Acid Galaxy? Oh, Acid Galaxy? Are they online? Okay. Acid... Galaxy? Ah, oh, they are! Okay, alright! Um, wow, okay. So this is the first time I have ever done a raid. I don't know what to do. Um, I guess when we go there, we just raid and just say hi and say that you're from Will to My Lo-Fi. But do you want to help me text like um, a raid call? Oh, okay, okay, raid, 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 raid. Okay, so Charming and anyone else on the stream who's here, just copy that and when we go and raid, we just like put that in the, in the comment section thingy. Let me, let me also copy it. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for a lovely, lovely morning. It has been so fun and I'll be back tomorrow. So let's go and raid Acid Galaxy. They are playing Little Nightmares, which is a game that I really want to play. Well, I want Bart to play. Okay, until next time, may days be magical and I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah. Let's start the raid. Okay, um, I don't know what to do though because um, it's 10 seconds. So does the stream cut out, bud? Uh, does it? I have no idea. Right now!